Oh, no. Hey, how's it going, man? Hello. Hello. So, what can I call you again? Are, are you just Conch Noob? I remember you wanted me to call you Noob last time, but, but I don't like that. Yeah, that was a joke. You can call me Conch Noob. Conch Noob it is, then. Alright, good. Just because that is a joke. You're, you're not a noob if you're getting coaching. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, my friends. I won't be a noob someday. No, 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 no. Yeah, we'll get you there faster. Someday sooner than you think. So here, I just sent you a screen share. Let me know if you can see. Yep, we're all good. Alright, cool. This is what you said you wanted to go over. So, where slash wind award roaming item variety. And this is as a support, correct? Yes. Alright, anything else? Or is this good? Because we can probably talk about this for an hour or so. Uh, I've got some other notes that I've thought of that I want to talk about if we... Yeah, uh, sure. Things to talk about. What's up? Hit me with them. Um, it's about certain items. Like, a lot of people tell me to get Sightstone, and I was asking about that in the stream yesterday. Yeah, Sightstone, really, really strong for for what it gives. And but that's why uh, my number one thing is where and when to word is because I don't really know how to use it properly, so often Got I it. don't really buy it. So that makes sense. If you don't know how to use it, then why buy it? Okay, that makes yeah. sense. So here, let's talk about... Let's just combine this up here. My sightstone is good. Alright, cool. What else? Another item is face of the mountain, which is what I usually rush first on support. And then a lot of people tell me to get sight stone first instead. So I was just wondering about that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like, kind of item order, when to buy what item in different situations. Because as a support, you do have a lot of flexibility and very limited gold. So, like, that one big item that you get first, you might that might be the item you have when you end the game. So yeah. it, it does matter a lot. So instead of just face of the mountain, is it, like, a build order? Um, well, if you look through my games, I main Blitzcrank, and my build is essentially the same every time. Yeah, I noticed that you're taking exhaust heal on him too, which is goofy, because you definitely want flash on Blitz. Yeah, people tell me to bring uh, flash, and I've started and, bringing and, flash. And, and by the way, just because people are telling you to do stuff doesn't mean it's right. So, so I'll, I'll walk you through the thinking, and then we can see if it's good or bad. But if people are just bossing you around, well, first of all, if it's in a silver game... Uh, they know just as much as you. Yeah. So so keep that in your back pocket. But um, one of the reasons you want flash is for the, the flash hooks. And you can cancel yeah. the hook animation with your flash to make it a faster, smoother thing and catch people off guard and make more plays. Also, it, it's just better. You have more survivability. Because you can, you know, jump over walls and stuff if you get caught trying to do risky invades or plays. But, but yeah, we, we can talk about stuff like your build, like what your runes and masteries are, and make little optimizations here and there. Whatever you want to do, man. But but going but let's just write it all down so I know what to do. So um so talking about face of the mountain first or other items first, is it more like what to build in different situations, which is kind of like this? Yeah, pretty much. Like all right. I usually stick to a, a build, and I think that's pretty bad to do. That's pretty bad really to do. Pay yeah. attention to what's going on and what you need to build. Uh huh. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about item variety and what to buy when. Yeah, cool. So we can do that. Uh, what else? Um, pink wards, as far as support pink wards go. Huh? We talked kind of about pink wards in our jungle session, but uh, I was wondering if it was any different. Uh, it, it is and it isn't. Like, let's say the jungler is doing the really good pink wards. Well, are you going to put the same pink ward down that he is? No. Pro probably not, right? Because you're just doubling down on it. So, yeah, we can talk about uh, the really good warding spots, uh, what you want to do. And, and also, if you play Blitzcrank, uh... Uh, let, let me tell you about some bait wards, too. Uh, do you know what I mean by that? No. It, like, uh... Like bait them to try and attack it, and then... Yeah, you know. like, like you can misclick. I, I'm doing air quotes right now on my stream. Like, a pink ward, so it's just outside of a bush. You know? And, and, and that's just so they can see it. Yeah. And then when they walk up to auto-attack it, you're just waiting in hook range from the fog of war somewhere. You know. I'll do that sometimes, like, if we're pushed up to, like, their wall, I guess, in their base. And then I'll put a ward on the other side of the wall. And since it's, like, under the turret, they'll be able to see it. And then they start attacking and I pull them and yeah. then our team deletes them. So, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. But but there's stuff like yeah. that you can do. That There are just better spots that help your team with vision. I mean, there's a bunch of interesting things you can do. But we can definitely talk about that. Uh, so pink wards how to use them, where to put them kind of thing. 
Yeah. Okay. Another thing is the trinket, like the warding trinket or the yeah the red one. I don't know what it's called. The sweeper. Where you can yeah, where you can remove their wards. I don't know how to use that or when to use it. I usually don't change it out ever, and I think I should, especially if I'm buying sites so I can use those wards instead. Sure, we can do that. Alright, you want to just run with this, see where we go? And if you have more questions, you have more questions, we'll just answer them. Yeah, looks good. Alright, what do you want to start with? Uh, we could start with wards. A lot of it is based around wards. Okay. Like a lot of the things I want to talk about, so that's probably a good place to start. Actually, I'm thinking about it. Sorry, I haven't done a support coaching session in a while. Like, not on stream at, at all, I don't think. Uh, I'm actually going to change it up. So I, I know I just asked you what you want to do, but I, I want to start not with one of these questions. I want to ask you you a question that's completely different. So, um, all right. So let me lay it on you. Uh, why does the meta have a support, and what is the support's job? Um, to uh, one of the things you can do is peel, and I think I know what that means, but I'm not sure. Well, well, l let me rephrase. Like, like I can play a tank top, yeah. and I can peel. So well, that's yeah. not necessarily why you, you have a support. That's something you can do, sure. That's not necessarily why you have a support. Um, I can peel as a mid laner. Like, if I'm playing Lux mid, I can peel with Lux. So it's the same kind of thing. If I'm playing Sejuani jungle, I can peel with Sejuani. So peeling is like trying to get people to chase you, right? Peeling so is is when the enemy team is trying to shit on one of your teammates and you stop them from doing that. So like you're, you're literally peeling them off of your teammates. Like if your teammate was a banana and they have the yeah. peel on them, you you peel the banana peel to take it off, right? You're peeling the enemy off of your teammate. That that's the way to interpret that phrase. Kind of makes sense. So like with blitz you can literally peel the person off your adc by pulling them. you can pull them away yeah like that's how you would peel a blitz now normally blitz is pulling people towards and like yeah. they have an amumu on the other team blitz is a horrible pick because amumu wants to get hooked you know but uh if they're like trying to jump on your ad carry maybe they're melee like maybe it's a trundle who's trying to eat your ad carry you know you can knock them up with your e uh, spam a laugh in there, silence them, and then when they're silenced, you know, you pull them away. This entire time your AD carry is just auto-attacking them, they'll, they'll probably die. Yeah, usually the combo for me is uh, grab, knock up, hold, flash masteries. I mean, yeah, that works. But yeah, peeling all that is is, hey, they're trying to kill my teammates, I'm just going to not let them using my abilities or item actives or whatever. Makes so, sense. like, if, if you have a stun and, like, a Nocturne ults your ADC, you just stun them, so then your ADC can either run away or kill them? Yeah, I mean, you gotta wait for the ult to land, because, like, yeah. he's immune to CC in the air. But, but yeah, pretty much. Alright. Um, so another thing you can do is well, forward, like... Well, well, I'm not asking, like, what you can do. I'm asking, why does the support role even exist? Why not just have two AD carries? Like, like here, like here, here's the meta, right? You have a, a top laner who's usually some kind of, of tank or split pusher, depending on what kind of comp you're going. You have a mid laner whose job it is to like get strong with farm and delete people. Usually like a burst mage, but you, you can play other stuff. And bot lane, usually you have an AD carry and a support. Jungle, you know, you're just kind of filling whatever your team comp needs. But but why is the meta set up that way? And do, do you even know what the, the meta means? Like the, the word, the meta? Or the phrase the meta not exactly the, the meta is just the optimal way to play the game to the best of the player base's knowledge so when someone says meta champion what does that mean it means like the champions that the pros are playing because it is the best champion to win games with all right if that makes sense so like like people talk about the meta changing that means the champions that are being played are changing and then the counters to those champions are also changing because the game's like rock paper scissors but there's 180 variants of the rocks papers and scissors right yeah so uh meta is just in the current state of the game the optimal way that the game is played so a meta champion would be like right now if you look in the lcs uh like you don't see a lot of sejuani you don't see a lot of janna jungle it's because those champions aren't as good at doing their jobs as other champions. The champions that are best at doing specific jobs are the meta champions. So who is a meta support right now? Meta support? Let's see. 
I mean, I can think of a lot of them, but like usually Thresh is up there. Blitzcrank is kind of iffy, but sports. Yeah, I, in the stream chat we were talking a lot. I was asking questions and a lot of people were answering, which was nice. And Yeah, and there's some good about, players doing that too. I was talking about getting Thresh and I recently got him. I played like two games with him and they were uh, team 5v5s. And Sorry, I'm, I'm looking right now for who they've been playing. Actually, we finally got our 5v5 team ranked. Nice. Where'd you end up? Like, we've never had like five people at once very often, so it took like two weeks. We got bronze five, so I guess we can't get any worse at least. <laughs> at least that's fun, right? You can only go up. Yeah. All right, so let's do this. I think I can filters. How, how do filters work on this site? Okay, apparently they don't. Uh, let's look at some of the supports, though. So here, here's who this guy has been playing. Oh, wow, it, it loaded. Okay, cool. Let's do position. So let's look at just the supports. Let's see who they're playing. This is Oracle's Elixir, one of the really good stats guys puts this site together. And it, let's, show, let's show all the entries. So what I'm doing right now is I'm filtering all the LCS games in the summer split just down to the support players. I'm, I just want you to look at the champions played here. And let's organize these alphabetically. Isn't Bard really strong? Bard is really strong if your team knows what you're doing and if you know how to play him. He is like literally the highest skill cap champion in the game, in my opinion. I so, heard Gangplank is pretty hard to play correctly. Uh, Bard is about three times harder, and that number is completely arbitrary, but I, I want you to get the idea that, that to play Bard well... It is way harder than to play Gangplank. And, and Gangplank, he's not that hard, actually. He, he's harder than, like, an Amumu. Yeah. But but I, he is not, like, that mechanical. There, there's stuff like the Phantom Barrel. There's stuff like paying attention on the map and using your alt. There's weird mechanics where you speed yourself up by hitting barrels. Uh, but, but he is not that hard to play. But here, l let's look through to see what everybody's playing, okay? And I'm trying to make this go up, but apparently... Apparently the site is either really slow or just whatever. So, okay, there we go. So let's start from the top and just go down. So, and you can look at the win percent. Oh my god, it just reverted back. Okay, let's start from the bottom. But Zyra's played a lot, it looks like. Some people have 0% win rates with her. Other people have 100% win rates. So it kind of depends, right? This GP is games played. So like Adrian, you know, on the Immortals. He has 100% win rate over five games. Other people, you know, don't. <laughs> So Trundle support is a thing that's played. Thresh played a bunch. Tarek played a bunch. Tom Kinch actually played a bunch. That's good in like protect the carry comps. Soraka played a whole bunch. Uh, there's one Cyan game, so he's probably not meta. That's probably just some goofy pick. And look, it didn't win, huh? Nautilus seen a little bit of play, but depending on who's playing it, not a lot of success. Nami, everybody's playing Nami. So, so the champions that like notice every single LCS and LCK and whatever player has Nami in here, Nami probably a really strong meta support. Morgana, only a handful of games. And actually, here, let's do it by games played. Maybe that'll be, be the better one. Okay, I, I don't understand how this site works. Because I'm like clicking stuff and then it's just not working at all. Probably just a lot of information. Yeah, probably, but... But I think it's just a shitty site. So, like, this guy has 22 Braum games. So let's look at the, the supports that are played the most. This, this might be a better way to do it. So Braum, Karma, Braum, Karma, Braum. Here's a Bard player, you know, decent win rate on him, too. Trundle, Karma, Soraka, Braum. Braum, Braum, Braum. One Alistar, Karma, Braum, Alistar, Nami, Karma, Karma, Karma. But the ones that are really high up here that are being played a lot, those are the meta supports, probably. So notice that there's like only six or seven champions that we're seeing played more than five games. Yeah, a lot of Braum. A lot of Karma. Karma's been really strong. So it's pretty much anybody that just does the support job better than all the other supports. Oh, that's good. Like, I, I didn't see any Blitzcrank, by the way, in pro play, so... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let, let's see, actually. Uh, I'm just going to filter on him. By the way, uh, here, let me let me put this in the chat in case you guys want to play at home. Oracle's Elixir, I'm not a fan of how this is loading, but... Four games. Yeah, four games. You got one player of two wins, one loss. You got one player of zero wins. It's Africa Freaks in the LCK, so th this might be a troll one, too. 
But yeah, does that kind of give you an idea of who's being played? Yeah. Yeah, and, and here, let me link this site to you in, in Skype if you want to look around afterwards, too. Because it is very good. All the stats on here are pretty solid, and it's a bunch of stuff that people don't look at. And he has explanations about what everything is if you, like, go in and, and actually look around. Like, I think there is an explanation tab somewhere. Like, FAQ, it, like, explains what every stat is. Do, do, do. But this guy, really smart statistician that's breaking down the game. But, but going back to my question, we, we still haven't really answered it. Uh, so the meta is the optimal way to play the game. Why in the meta do we even have a support? Why don't we just have another carry? More damage, right? And, and if you don't know, that's fine. But, but try to think through it. And, and there are other ways to get at it, too. Like, uh, why is the support always bot lane with 80 carry? Why don't you send the support mid? Why don't you send the support top? I don't really have a clue. All right, let me give you a, a history lesson then. Uh, did you ever watch any of the pro games from Season 1 of League of Legends? No, but I watched a history video about League of Legends. Okay. And it said in Season 3, I think, there was a tournament where it basically decided the meta, like where people went and stuff because mm -hmm. uh, one team figured out like the optimal way to play and since then they haven't really gotten any better so uh, in, in season one everybody played marksman everybody played 80 carries every single lane uh, can you think about why uh, it was unbalanced because it was season one uh, no, it, balance balance was definitely an issue. Like, there was a bunch of goofy shit. Like, Ignites used to stack, so level 1, if you walk past the wrong bush, 5 Ignites would just jump on you, and then you die. Because Ignites also used to do more damage. So there's a bunch of goofy stuff like that. So sure, it was imbalanced. But everything was imbalanced. So so why would everyone play uh, Marksman Season 1? Most, most damage? Yeah, most damage. Literally the most DPS. And in a game where you have to take towers to win, right? Because you take the towers to take the inhib to take the Nexus and Towers to take the Nexus. Marksman lets you do that the fastest. Uh, what happened after that, though, like in Season 2, people started playing mostly tanky champions. Because people figured out, okay, well, Marksman, right? Well, if I can just survive their damage long enough to kill them, then whatever, we just win. So then, like, the meta shifted because people figured out, well, if they're going 5 Marksmen, why don't we just get a few tanks and then we'll just, you know not die to them because tanks counter marksmen it's thinking like the paper to the rock or the the rock to the scissors right and then we'll just you know not die and because they can't kill us and we can kill them like over a long enough time you know and then we'll just take the tower sure we'll take it slower but we're winning every team fight so it doesn't matter and again the game was like balanced around 30 or 40 champions or whatever so it was a lot easier to, to do stuff like that so, so then it shifted into weird shit like that. And then in Season 3, there was actually a really goofy change uh, where they sent the AD carry bot uh, with the support. Before, like, the AD carry used to be, like, mid and stuff, too. It was really, really weird. There was all kinds of crazy shit. Like, you would see Scion Taric bot lanes. And this is back when Scion had a targeted stun and Taric had a targeted stun. So you would just chain those together and then just kill people back and forth. And, like, and, like shit like that still works, but... It's a lot cheesier because players have figured out how to play around it. But um, so in season three, what happened? You, you were watching that that video. Break it down for me because I'm talking too much and I want you to be learning. Um, well, there was a lot of stuff I didn't understand, and then it pretty much got into the stuff I started understanding, like season six and season five. Like a lot okay. of the videos I watch aren't that old, so a lot of the older stuff confuses me. Yeah, yeah, and, and I wouldn't recommend watching the older stuff. We're just doing a history lesson so you understand the fundamentals of why your role that you're trying to learn better support exists. Okay, yeah, so... I guess it's just for a good balance of everything. So, so let me let me tell you this. So right now, uh, what's the meta? Like, like we, we went over it at the very beginning, but, but who's usually top? Uh, like a tank or a bruiser. Tanky bruiser, just just some kind of frontline champion. And I mean, there are exceptions. Like people will play like weird stuff, like Rise Top or Jace Top. That's not always tanky. Depends on the team count. But but generally, 
or Teemo, right? Like, Teemo's just weird. He, he doesn't really fit the meta. That's why you don't see a lot of him in LCS. That's why when TSM picked Teemo uh, a couple days ago, it was like, wow, because you just never see him because he doesn't fit the meta comp of having a tanky frontliner top. I see him a lot in bronze. Right, because in bronze, people just play whatever because they don't understand the meta or, or whatever. Yeah. So, so usually tanky person top. What about mid? Who's usually mid? Like a mage or a assassin sometimes. But but what what is common between the mage and the assassin? What what a is their job? Burst. A lot of burst damage. Their job is to just delete people if they misstep. Usually, and there are exceptions like uh, like Ziggs, for example. I play a lot of Ziggs. Ziggs yeah, doesn't have a lot of burst. Nick with them. Yeah yeah yeah. But yeah, l let's not talk about that. Nick Nick might be a little. His feelings might be hurt. He might still be oh. tender. We need time time for the healing to happen. Sorry. But uh, no, no worries, no worries. You didn't know. You didn't know. But uh, uh, Ziggs is at burst. He's weird. He has to like whittle people down. He's more of like a poke mage. But there are other people like you mentioned Lux, right? Like Lux throws a binding. She catches it. She just hits every button on her keyboard, weaving autos yeah. in between spells to optimize her DPS. But the way to think about mid is they are like burst damage. And, and their job is to just delete someone if they step out of line. Just do a bunch of damage all at once, then kind of back off. Generally, that's what happens mid. And, and the reason, you, why do you send them mid instead of like bot or top, do you know? Uh, so for one thing, it's the shortest lane. So if you look here, like this distance is a lot yeah, shorter. Yeah, always get to mid first. Yeah, so the minions get there faster. So if the minions get there faster, what is mid getting faster than the other lanes? Uh, farm. Yeah, more farm. So if you have more farm, what does that mean? You have more gold if you're farming correctly. Yeah, you have more gold, you have more experience, so you're hitting level 6 faster. So you're, you're just going to be stronger faster than anyone else on the map, essentially, by going mid. Yeah. Kind of makes sense. So, so why not send, like, an AD carry mid? Because don't AD carries want to get to late game? Aren't they the strongest at, like, level 18? Um, well, why not? Because they don't have a lot of burst. Well, they don't have a lot of burst, but, I mean, if they're just... If they just need to farm to get strong, right? They don't need to burst. You can play an AD carry mid, like I play Ziggs mid, right? You just sit back and farm. So, so what? Why don't they send an AD carry mid? Not sure. So, uh, who'd you say normally goes mid? Assassins or mages. So, what happens if you send like an Ash mid against like a Talon or a Zed? She'll get deleted. She'll get deleted, right? So if she's going to get deleted, why would you ever send her mid? Because you don't want to feed. Yeah, you don't want her to feed, so not mid. So, so okay, let's let's put her back bot lane where she belongs. Let's put someone that can actually handle the other assassin or the other burst mage who's literally designed to delete squishy characters, right? Let's put them mid. Okay, and so they'll get those resources faster, so they hit those power spikes faster. So in team fights, they're doing a lot of damage, and if they can delete someone important, cool, you win the team fight. You know, that's the way to think about mid, right? And they have the shortest lane because it's the safest, because it's super short. Um, they can farm the fastest, and they can also move anywhere on the map. So they're the closest to all the objectives. So I would rather have my strongest person able to delete someone like a jungler or like a top laner at half health trying to do Rift Herald or contest Dragon. I, I would not want my like squishy 80 carry who still needs levels and experience before they get strong and probably peel too uh, to be here by themselves. So that's one of the reasons that's there. Yeah, we were, when we were playing one of uh, the team 5v5s, my friend likes to play Talon mid. Uh -huh. and they had a Soraka on their team, and in every team fight, what he would try and do is just delete Soraka, and if he did successfully, we would usually win the team. Yeah, I mean, that's his job in that situation. Soraka is the most important player on the enemy team, because if you don't delete her, like you have to essentially kill them eight times because of all the healing she's doing. Yeah. So yeah, it makes perfect sense to me. So yeah, you, your job as a mid laner is usually to just do damage, not damage per second, that's like the AD carry, sustain damage down here, right? But yeah. to do enough damage to win you that team fight. So burst damage, or it depends on your champion, obviously, but that. So here, let's go to jungle. Why do we have a jungle? Why, why don't we just have two top laners, or two mid laners, or three bot laners? Um, to have map control. But I mean, I can have map control. Why don't I just have a, a roaming support? I could have two top laners, I could have a really safe AD carry like Ezreal, and I could just have a roaming support that goes all the way around the map. Or why don't I have two junglers, you know, and three solo lanes? Uh, I, 
I'm just saying, like, like, why not? I mean, I've seen some pretty weird team comps in Braun. Oh, right, right, for sure. But, but, but we're, we're thinking about optimal stuff, right? So, so why, why even have a jungle? Why? Let, let's just start here. Why not put the jungle mid lane? Then you'll get behind because you're sharing XP and gold. You are sharing XP. You are sharing gold. So so why is that important? Because like if, if I'm in in the lane with my mid laner, yeah, he doesn't get 100% of the XP, but he gets 66% of it, and I get 66% of it. If you had 66 plus 66, you know, that that's more than just 100. So like net as a team, we're actually up EXP, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so why is that bad? And I'm just trying to, to lead you to kind of the answer. Like, like think about it. And, and now, gold sharing is part of it, right? Because if we're sharing the gold, like, let's say I hit a minion, then they hit a minion. You know, it's half the gold to you, half the gold to you. Well, if they only have one mid laner, they're getting double the gold that my mid laner is getting, right? They're going to be stronger twice as fast. Yeah. So, so that's one reason you wouldn't want to do it. Also, the experience, yeah, they're getting two-thirds of the experience, but this guy is getting, you know, 100% of the experience, so their mid laner here is going to be stronger than this mid laner just because he's going to out level them he's getting 33 percent extra exp so that the reason you have a jungler at all is because these neutral camps exist right mm -hmm. and what do they give xp and gold yeah so you have a jungler because you are optimizing the resources on the map so if there was no one farming these resources uh, they would just sit there and go to waste. And, like, let's say you have your jungler mid, like we we're talking about, and they have their jungler, right? Well, mid lane's getting 100% of the experience in gold, uh, assuming that they're not being zoned out by stuff, by these two guys. Well, that's going on. Uh, the jungler is also getting 100% of the golden experience from these camps, and Ryan's balanced the game around this role existing. So, if these guys are getting two thirds of the experience, compared to this guy getting 100%, you know, this jungler is going to fall behind compared to this counterpart. Same thing with the mid laner, right? Half the gold, two-thirds of the experience compared to 100% of the gold, 100% of the experience. And that's if, you know, you can get access to every CS. Like, yeah, maybe you might be zoned off of the wave because there's two people here. Maybe. But over enough time, they are going to fall behind compared to you. Does, well, does actually, that... uh, I, you put a link for the CSing guide mm -hmm. in the chat yesterday and it explains how you can farm under turret so that if you have to play safe you can still get all the farm yeah exactly but what i'm saying is like here uh what good players will do let's say the wave is here you know they'll do something called freezing and what that means is they'll hold the wave right here so that you can't go close enough to farm and they'll control the wave so it never goes up to your tower and then they'll just stand right here and every time they want to farm they'll go back and any time you step too close, they'll kill you. Oh. So, yeah, if you can control the wave and manipulate it so it comes to your tower, fantastic. And that is a good skill to learn because down in bronze and silver and gold and platinum and even diamond, people don't know how to do this. But it gets really good players, like in the meta where people are playing optimally. Eh, usually, usually they know how to manipulate the waves. And, and that could be as simple as, you know, minion wave is coming up. Jungler just holds it and tanks it right here so that the, the line of scrimmage is right here, right in front of the tower, so that the tower's not even hitting these. And then they just last hit at the very last second so that it barely budges. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It, there's some other goofy tricks you can do, like uh, make the minion wave focus you for a second and then go into a bush, and then they'll lock onto one minion instead of three, and that'll push the wave faster towards you. So there are ways to manipulate that. But yeah, it's good that you're reading the Elander's guide, and if you're practicing that, that'll help you a lot in your lane. It won't help you in the jungle because you don't need to worry about CSing as much. It won't help you as much as support. Although understanding how to manipulate the wave and do that stuff will help you already carry a last seven in the tower. So it's it's not bad to like go through that drill. It just won't help you as much on like support and jungle because you don't really care about CSing as much. Yeah. But but going back to the question, okay, so so do you understand why jungler exists? Yes. The sole purpose is to farm these neutral minions so you can get more resources than the enemy team. If you don't have a jungler, you're going to fall behind compared to a team that does have a jungler because somebody is sharing experience, and on the other team, someone is not. So they're getting more out of it. All right, what about AD carry? What is the AD carry's job? What is their role? Uh, do consistent 
consistent damage over time. Yeah, sustained damage. But but why is it an AD carry? Why isn't it like you know why don't they take Zigzbot? Zig does sustain damage over time, right? Uh, what about an Anivia? Anivia does sustain damage over time, consistently. Yeah, if you're just standing in her alt, you're getting sustained down, right? What what about oh, what about oh, Malzahar? He's doing sustained damage over time, right? Because you need. AD for pushing. For pushing what? I uh, just get a Sunfire cape. Yeah, the, uh, the AD carry's sole purpose is to take towers. And I'm sure there's a bunch of like AD carry mains out there that that are like upset with me saying that. They're like, no, it's to make flashy LCS plays. It's so I can jump in and get Pentacle. No, it's literally to be the last person alive when a team fight ends, so you can take towers faster. Like that's the sole purpose of having an AD carry. As weird as that sounds, right? Yeah. Um, also, what's weird about AD carries compared to other roles? And think about it from a when are they strongest standpoint. Late game? Yeah, their strongest late game with a full build. So, like, level 18 with six items. Uh, why is that? Um, because they scale well. Yeah, they scale insanely well. They're ranged... Here, one second. Uh, apparently, my, my pet hedgehog, Bulbasaur, needs more worms, so I need to do that. My wife is just telling me in the background. But okay, now I know. But yeah, like, why do they scale so well? Um, I don't know. Well, they're, they're ranged, so they're relatively safe. Because something like a melee, right? You can auto attack, move back a little. Auto attack, move back a little. And some champions can just never get to you if you kite like that. Kite means you kind of drag people along, make them chase you while doing damage, and they're not doing da damage to you. So uh, think think like Ash, right? She's slowing people that are trying to run on her and, and then hitting them with auto attacks, and she's always keeping them at arm's length. So like Ari. Yeah, kind of like Ari. How Ari plays. Same. She kites as well. That that's her. She or Singe. Singe wants you to chase him, right? Yeah. You're breathing in his farts or his poison, depending on what skin you have, and he's not taking damage. So, AD carries can kite just because of their range. Also, um, the way Riot has designed them, because of that range, they're super weak early, and then as they get items, and as their scaling kicks in, they usually become really, really strong late game. Because it's six items with like a full crit build, you could be doing, you know, thousand damage per auto depending on how much armor the enemy team has you know it, it's just ridiculous and you just take towers really fast because if you have like dps build damage per second you're like auto tech auto tech auto tech auto tech auto, and each one is doing a a lot of damage to that tower right so generally you have the ad carry bot because it is their job to take towers as quickly as possible also if they're ranged right uh they don't have to be put in danger of the tower like, like let's say let's say you're doing the a ram thing mid right and you're kind yeah. of sieging down this tower, and everybody's standing here. And you have your tanks in front. Let's say everybody's a tank except for the AD carry. You know, it's just something weird, right? And you have a minion wave, and you're zoning people out. And I know this is super congested, but the AD carry can just sit in the back and right-click the tower while they have their front line in front. This is a horrible example because the circles are making it so you can't see the tower. I understand. But you see what I'm saying, right? Because of that range, they can do that. They can get away with that. All right, so AD carry, super weak early, late game, just unstoppable killing machine as long as they are allowed to DPS, and their job is literally to be the last one alive in a team fight so they can take as many towers as quickly afterwards. So they can take as many objectives after the fight. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. And I'm generalizing, but that's why they exist. So why does the support exist? Well, here, let, let's do the same thing we did mid. Why don't we have two AD carries bot? So the support is supposed to help the AD carry do DPS? I mean, sure. But or that's not the, the reason AD supports exist. I'm uh, sure. But that's not the reason they exist. Like, I, again, I can do that as a tanky top. I can do that as a jungler. I can do that as a mid laner. I can just delete them. They're not doing any DPS if they're dead, right? Yeah. So, so why does this support exist? And again, think about it. Think about it this way: Why why do we have a support, not a second AD carry? 
Well, let's start there. What happens if we have two eighty carries? What happens if this S is an eight? Oh. And just think through it logically. Like, like, what's going to happen in the lane? Well, since they're super weak early, they might struggle early game and get behind. Yeah, they're both going to struggle early game. What else are they sharing? Farm. Yeah, they're sharing farm. So what do AD carries need to get strong? Gold and XP. Gold and XP. So XP, that won't be a problem, right? Because you, you already had a support, so you're still getting two-thirds of the XP be shared between each of you. So two-thirds for one, two-thirds for the other. What about the gold, though? Um... Well, you need to share it. Yeah, you need to share it, because otherwise one is going to be really strong, the other one's just going to be a joke. And if they have an AD carry and a support, is the support generally like getting any gold from the farm? Uh, unless he has a support item like Relic Shield. Yeah, like Relic Shield, sure. Something else like that. I, I know there's other ones that I don't really get. Yeah, generally the supports have some kind of gold income item. Riot has done a good job like building support items that give the support gold. So like the the spell thief's line, like uh, when the you, mastery uh, bandit, yeah, I think. the bandit mastery that's there to help supports out. It also works great in top lane if you're bad at CSing like me. But um, but that's there so like every time the AD carry kills something, you get a you get a gold. And if you land auto attacks on the enemy team, you get gold too. If you're melee, you get a lot of gold. If you're range, you get you still get gold, but it's less gold. But that's there so support players can get gold because they are not farming minions, and they're not farming minions. Why? They want the ADC to get the Yeah, because they want the AD carry to get all the gold. Why do you want the AD carry to get all the gold? So they'll be powerful late game. Yeah, so they can buy more items and so they can carry your ass to victory. So you can climb and play with better players. I mean, it, it's not hard, right? So so think about it that way. That's why you generally have a support. Uh, there, there are other reasons too, but what happens if you have two AD carries? Same they'll thing we just got to talk share about. Gold and they won't, they'll have to like split the items, basically. They'll have to share gold. They're splitting the items. 180 carry with six items is stronger than 280 carries with three items. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So think about it that way. Um, now, what else is the support's job? Like, like, why do you see champions like Blitzcrank in the support role? Um, so you can... I mean, sure. That, that's the thing you can do as a support. That's the thing you should do as a support sometimes, and we can talk about when to and when not to. But but again, why is this support bot lane with the AD carry? Let's focus that, first of all. So, um, what do we say about the AD carry's power spike? When are they strongest? When are they weakest? They're strong late game. Strong late game. When are they not strong? Early game. Early game. When does the support usually hang out with the AD carry? early game. Why? Because they uh, need help. Yeah, they, they need help, making sure they're not going to get shit on. What happens if the enemy jungler just comes bot? Like, let's say this support is a roaming support, like you said. Like, it's a bard that like wants to live top lane for whatever reason. So he's up and here he supporting top. Chimes. And he's collecting his chimes. He's caretaking. He's caretaking, guys. But it, when that happens, oh, AD carries alone bot. You know, jungle Rek'Sai comes in, knock up, you know, Sona... Like, lands is slow and drops a bunch of damage. Jinx throws traps on top. You know, this AD carry's dead. AD carry's not getting farmed when they're dead, right? So the support's role is kind of to just make it so the AD carry can survive until they start getting strong. So they're like a parent? They're like a babysitter. That might be a better way to think about it. Right. Especially if the AD carries I, I get stuck with. <laughs> no offense if anybody watching is an AD carry main. But the, the support's job is to literally support the AD carry until they can kind of function on their own or until team fighting starts to happen. And they and that's one of their jobs. They have multiple jobs. But just to make it so the AD carry can survive in lane and get the farm they need to get strong. So, so that's the first job. Now, now let me ask my question again. Uh, why do you see champions like Blitzcrank or Thresh? Um, they can help their ADC get more powerful faster by pulling in the enemies and feeding them kills. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you just kill the enemy team, that's good. But but what about Janna? Like, like Janna can't really do that as, as easily. She can if you're good. But uh, Janna's a really common support. Uh, why do players play Janna as a support? She can shield. 
she can knock up, which is like a disable. Yeah, she, she's she's a keep away support, right? So if you try to engage, she says nope. Tornado, alt, shield, slow, whatever. Yeah. But but that's what I'm trying to say. Like like sure, there are some supports that help by killing. Like Leona's a really good example. Hey, cool, we're gonna kill them both. Then it'll be really easy to farm, right? You know, that that's kind yeah, of the Leona I, mindset. I think now that you're explaining it more, I've determined that I like the aggressive supports better. Good, and we can focus on those because I do too. Because every time. Like, when Leona was in the free rotation, I really liked her. I played her a lot. And then I played Blitzcrank all the time, which is really aggressive. Good, good. Uh, aggression will win you games in low ELO, because people make a lot of mistakes, and aggression is there to punish mistakes. Um, but, but here, let me ask you a question again, and I, and I want you to really think about an answer. Uh, why do champions like Janna, Blitzcrank, Leona, Thresh, why do they exist, and why are they mostly support? Why do they exist mostly in the support role? Let me phrase it that way. What about them makes them really good picks for support? This might be wrong, but they're not very good at killing people by themselves. Well, why, why not just pick people that are good at killing people by themselves then? Like, why not just pick, you know, Zed support? Well, then he'll want some gold. Yeah, sure. I mean, he'll want some gold, but I mean, it's not that big of a deal, right? I mean, going to kill the enemy AD carry, so you don't have to worry about dying. So it's cool, right? They're still powerful without gold. Yes. Yes. Okay, you got it. Thank you. Nice. So Blitzcrank, what does he need to do to, to help his team win the game? Simple uh, questions, simple answers. Pull people in and get them deleted. Does he need gold to do that? Nope. No. What, what about Thresh? Does Thresh need gold to be effective? No. No, why? Um, all he has to do is like disable people so that yeah. land a hook, flay people, people in away, box people in, use lantern to shield people to save lives over walls to teleport people around. He doesn't need gold to do that. Like, sure, if he gets gold, he'll be better at doing that. But I mean, I, I've watched like uh, one of my favorite support players right now is Hanjaro Lol, uh, and I watched him just he, he plays support and he'll carry with like half an item. You know, and he likes playing Thresh a lot. He's really good at the, the Hook City champs. I've so, seen this play where you land a hook on an enemy, then throw out your lantern, and then yep. you use your Q again, and both of you teleport to them, and it's insane. Yeah, and you can do that, like, here, let's say you're jungler. Let's say you're playing Thresh. Oh, you yeah, probably you can here. Throw your, uh, you can throw your lantern to your jungler so they can gank faster. Yeah, so jungler is usually just waiting back here in the Fog of War. You land a hook... You throw your lantern back. You jump in at the second half of your hook. Jungler grabs the lantern, and while he's grabbing the lantern, that's when you jump in. And then when you're here, you know, and the jungler's on his way, you flay them into the jungler, who is now ready with their abilities to destroy them, and then the entire time the enemy AD carry is right-clicking them, right? Yeah. Now, do, again, does Thresh need gold to do that? Nope. What does he need to do that play? Teammates that can get kills if he doesn't. Yeah, and, and realistically, he needs three levels. Yeah. So enough experience. So think about it that way. Uh, supports are generally supports because they are very good at doing their job, which is helping they, their AD carry stay alive um, and stay safe and helping their team win by any means necessary without any gold. And the reason it's important for them to not need gold is because who needs all the gold bot lane? ADC. The ADC, right? So if you're funneling gold into you, I mean, that sucks because you're stealing it from a carry who would otherwise be stronger. And and why don't we see supports go top or mid usually? What was the reason for that again? Because the ADC needs babysitting. Yeah, because they're super duper weak early, and if you do that as a support, sure, you know, this mid lane might fall behind a little, but the enemy jungler, if they have a brain, will just shit on this AD carry because it's a 3v1, and even if somebody dies, whatever, there's still two people to take this tower. And especially this patch, that, that tower has no uh, damage resistance early and is worth 1,200 gold to your team if you take it before they take a tower. Yeah, a lot of the time we take the the first tower, and I don't Good. really know how much of an impact it makes, but I know it's helping a little bit. At least. I've done some math. If you take the first tower, you have a 65% chance of winning the game, and it varies Uh across the, the ranks, but generally that is such a huge spike in gold 
that it's hard to come back from. And yeah, generally, if you're taking... They're really aggressive, and I guess since we're low elo, they make a lot of mistakes, and we capitalize off those, and then we just sure, spread sure. them. But, but another way to think about it, if you're coordinated enough to take the first tower, you probably have like a lot of teamwork and cohesion. It's probably not an accident. And, and when I say take the first tower, I mean take the first tower and make sure that everybody standing near it gets that extra first cement bonus because you get an extra oh, yeah. 400 gold for the tower taken yeah, if you're we standing don't, we next don't really to it. We do that. We just take it to people. I mean, that's fine, too. You just split the 400 gold up. I think it's 25 to everybody on your team, and then the 275 is split evenly amongst whoever's standing there. So, so again, that's still fine because as a team, that's 400. And then you also get the 300 for everybody standing nearby, and then 100 to everybody on the team for just killing the tower. So if you add all that up, 100 times 5 plus the 300, that's 800. And then the 400, uh, that's 1,200. That's what I mean. That's the first tower bonus, which is new this patch. But anyway, so so that's why the AD carry isn't left alone. Because A, they're weak as hell early normally. Uh, also, when is the support strongest and weakest? And, and this varies by support. But but let's say Blitzcrank, for example. When is he generally seen as the scariest? Really strong early game. Yeah, like level one, that hook gets you first blood. If he lands level a hook... Level two is pretty good as well with the knockup. Level two is really good. What about level three? I don't find the W very useful unless you're like going in or running away, but I, it's pretty helpful. All I'm trying to say is early levels, he's very scary because those base damages are usually pretty beefy compared to what other people can do. The enemy AD carry doesn't have any damage items yet. Uh, the support is generally the scariest player on the enemy team like level one, level two, level three, generally. But then yeah. later, everybody starts out scaling them, right? Like, oh, I hit six and I have my first item. Supports, you know, done with Sightstone. Yep. Then the tables kind of turn, and the support starts relying on their teammates to to carry them. Yeah. Kind of makes sense. Yep. All right. So, so that's one job, and, and let me write this down just so we, we can do it. Support job. So number one, babysit the AD carry so that they can farm and get strong. And I mean, sometimes, like like we talked about with Leona, with Blitzcrank, uh, the best way to do that is just kill the enemy team. Because you get stronger faster when you don't have anybody trying to kill you or harass you out of the lane, right? So uh, what's another way you can do this and or that you can help your team win as a support? Um, once your ADC is powerful enough to be by themselves for a little, you can roam and help the other lanes. Yeah, sure. So think about the support's job, and I'm just going to say this generally, do anything to win the game. So like with Blitzcrank, let's say AD carry is backing. Well, you know, you need a little more gold before you back. You have like 700 gold, you want a sight stone, uh, and you're full health and mana. I don't know why you are, but you are, right? And these guys just backed. Maybe you just force them out of lane. I don't know. AD carry back because they want to buy. Maybe it's an Ezreal. He finally has his tier, so he just wants to buy it. He doesn't feel like pushing. So cool. You have a window to roam mid or roam top or go into the enemy jungle and ward it up, right? So, yeah, totally do that. And by the time he gets back here, you can be walking back down. I mean, that, that's One the thing, thing you can do. thing I saw is, uh, like, both players on the enemy team back and his ADC back. And what he did was he had the minions follow him around till his ADC got back. Oh, yeah, for and sure. He like, he, like, tanked it, and then the ADC didn't lose that farm. So, like, sometimes the enemy team will push up the minions. Like, I always recommend to do that. So you're saying what your support did is he walked up here and just held them outside of that tower range so that they wouldn't die, right? Yeah, he had them all, like, just follow him around. And yeah. He took a bunch of damage, but he just backed afterwards, and uh, he got a bunch more farm. trick you can do, if this bush isn't warded, go in and out of the bush. The minions will drop aggro on you, and you'll take less damage. But they'll still stay right here. You're just dancing back and forth. And then another reason he's doing that, remember how we talked about uh, farming under tower? Yeah. But if you, it's called freezing, but if you hold the minions right here, right outside a tower range, they'll just sit there if you like prune the wave so that you know your wave comes and reinforces it right at the same time that the enemy team's wave, I'm trying to zoom out so you can see, comes and reinforces theirs. And then the wave will just sit here. And if you're like here, farming under your tower, what's it really hard for the enemy team to do? Kill you. Yeah, kill you. It's like, the jungler's gonna see that lane and be like, screw that, I'm not doing that. Unless you're like Sejuani in 6 and you can dive, or Malphite and you can dive, or Amumu and you can, right? But if it's like level 3, like, these guys are untouchable, essentially. Yeah. So, that kind of play is really, really smart, because it 
keeps your AD carries safe. Also, if you do that, you know, cool. Farming under tower, they probably can't kill him very easily. Depends on the matchup, obviously. But hey, maybe I roam and I try to make a play top or mid. Because I can't, because I'm a support. And my second job is to help my team in any way I can. Uh, so what's another way you can help your team win the game that has to do with Sightstone? Vision? Yeah, Vision. So uh, what is generally seen as the supports, like, one of their main jobs? Looking at the map. Yeah, looking at the map, sure. So what's one of the reasons supports are generally looking at the map compared to, like, uh, your mechanical Azir mid lane? Because they have to focus on being mechanical, and all you have to do is stand there and make sure your ADC doesn't die. Yeah, like Blitzcrank, half the time you're sitting in a bush and your presence alone is enough to like keep them off your AD carry, right? Yeah. A so, lot of the time I'll sit in like the, the bush closest to their turret and yeah. they'll just stay under turret and they won't leave because they know it'll happen if they do. Yeah, exactly. So well, while you're doing that, does it take a lot of mechanical skill and focus to like not move? Not really. So what can you be doing while you're not moving? Watching out on the map. So yeah, watching the map. And okay, you spot the enemy jungle for a second. What do you do? You could ping. You could tell your jungler to. Yeah, ping danger. Ping hey, jungler's coming mid. Care mid. You know, something like that. Oh, we can do dragon because jungler just showed top and he was a hundred health. You know, so supports are generally the shot callers. Junglers are generally the shot callers for the same reason. Like I, I talk about it on my stream, but if I'm playing say Juani or a Mumu. You know, I use my cooldowns, and while I'm on cooldown, I'm looking at the map, I'm checking out all my lanes, I'm looking for the jungler to plan out my next three minutes of the game, my next move, stuff like that, right? So because I don't have to focus on last hitting, I just have more brain bandwidth to look at the map and kind of help my team vision-wise, because they don't. They're focusing generally. Kind of make sense? Yeah. So vision is one thing. How else can you help your team vision-wise? Uh, warding... Yeah, wording. So I'm going to call this uh, awareness, and I'm going to make a new one for warding. Wording. So, so uh, where are good places to ward as a support? Like, I don't buy Sightstone that very that often, so I think I might be doing something wrong there, because a lot of the time I'll run out of wards, and I won't know so, where to use them. So let, let me ask you this. What are your jobs that we've talked about so far? Uh, babysitting, vision... And winning. Babysitting the AD carry, doing anything to win the game, and providing awareness. And awareness is generally like, hey, where's the enemy team? What are they trying to do? Hey, careful team, you're out of position because their top lane just went missing. He's roaming mid. Back up a little. You're getting ganked. You know, stuff like that, right? So, right? Yeah, but like, as far as words in the bot thing that you can just place and then walk back into lane. So, Where so, should I be warding? So what I'm asking is, okay, to do these things, where do you think the best wards would be? In bushes, probably? I mean, maybe. So, so first of all, why even ward at all? What's the point of warding? To know what's going on. To know what's going on. Okay, why do you want to know what's going on? What could be going on? Well, if you walk up into a bush and face check it, you might get jumped and die. Yeah, but for sure. But if you ward it, then or it is warded, then you'll know they're there like you. Ward the tri-bush, then you might avoid getting ganked. Yeah, for sure. So so let's say you're, you're the orange team. They're the blue team. Uh, the minions are like right about here. So a little bit up, right? Yeah. What's one thing that might happen to your AD carry? Um. Here, let, let's make it more obvious. Let's say the minions are frozen right here. What I mean by that is your wave is here, their wave is here. This is like the line where they're meeting, okay? So your AD carry is up. Maybe he's down here, too. But he's all the way up here. What's probably going to happen? You're going to get ganked. You're going to get ganked, yeah. This is like the dinner bell for the enemy jungler. So if the enemy jungler is going to come gank you, remember we talked about like jungle paths and stuff you can do as a jungler in our lesson, which will actually help you as a support, right? Uh, what do you need to know to keep your AD carry safe? Where are the enemy junglers? Okay, so if you have two wards, where would you want a ward to see the enemy jungler coming? First of all, think from the jungler's perspective. If you're the jungle, uh, who's the enemy jungle? Pick a champion. Rengar. Rengar, okay. Uh, okay, that's fine. If you're Rengar, where are you going to gank from? Um, the Ren river. 
Rengar is a bad example because if he's six, he can come through lane, and there's not much you can do about it. Uh -huh. Okay. So let, let's um, say like a Hecram. Hecram's a much better example. Hecram can do the same thing if he gets really, really fast and has his ult. But but let's say he doesn't. Let's say it's like level three. Right. You know. So where's Hecram probably gonna gank from? The river. Okay, the river. So like like up here, right? Where are the paths he can come from? Um, Remember, Tri Bush or S Dragon. So he can come through Tri Brush and oh my god, I'm I'm rolling poorly. He'll come around here, probably loop around and try to push you back into the team. Or, like you said, he'll come drag and hug this wall, then come behind you and try to kill you, right? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. So generally it's going to be either here, boop, or through here, and then he'll join up on this circle, right? So now, if you had two wards, where would you put them? And why? The fry bush and the, I don't know what it's called, the bush above spot lane. So this bush here? Yes. Uh, are you sure? No. So, I, I like the tri-brush ward. Why do I like the tri-brush ward? For, for one thing, I'll give you a hint. He can come from here, or he can come from here. So if you put, like, a ward here... It covers sure, two places. Yeah, it covers multiple places. Sure, you'd see him earlier, but you'd completely miss this path. And he might be coming from Krugs. So, tri-brush ward is right on the money. But what's bad about this ward? You don't see them soon enough? Yeah, so by the time Hecram is here, you're, you're seeing him right here. If your AD carry is right here, is he safe? Not exactly. No, he, he's probably dead. Or he's going to burn both summoners and walk away with 10 health and not be able to farm. And remember, the whole point of your existence is to make it so the AD carry can do what? Farm. Farm. So if he's forced out of lane, what's he not doing? Farming. So why is this a shitty ward, especially against Hecram, who can go really, really fast and cover ground really, really fast before most players even notice he's there? Uh, it'll be too late by the time you see him. So where would be a better place for that ward? Uh, like the one right above Dragon, the tiny one in the middle of river. Oh, here? Yeah. Actually, yeah, that's not bad. If you have these two spots, uh, where can he actually... Let's say, you remember, he's blue side, so he's over here, right? Uh, bot lane, he can come from this way, he can come from this way. Where can he come from up here? Uh, well, if you aren't going to see him, he'll have to come from your jump. Yeah, like, the only way he can really get through is to come through here. I mean, maybe he can flash or ult over a dragon pit, but that's just stupid, right? Why would he do and, that? And if your jungler's good, he probably got the scuttler, so then that'll be covered as well. Yeah, generally, the, the way to think about it uh, is that you would want a ward here, actually, and your jungler would want a ward here, or your mid lane would want a ward here. And yeah, if Scuttle's up, yeah, save your ward until it's down. But uh, something like this would be good. And the reason for this is you don't want to leave your AD carry long enough to actually get a ward here. Also, if you're walking into that bush, there's a higher chance that, like, you know, Hecarim will just come kill you. Yeah. Because he might have double buff and be super scary. You're just a support with, you know, a ward and, like, a very tiny support item. So this, it's not hard to walk up here, drop a ward, walk back. But somewhere in here is where you want it. And the main reasoning is, here, let me, like, clear the map real quick. But if we look, uh, the routes that he can come to gank you are one, you know, two, three. And how is he going to get to that three? Well, he's going to come through here, right? Yeah. Or he's going to come through here. Well, do you need a ward to see this one? No, because your mid laner will see it. Yeah, because mid laner and minions and stuff, you'll probably see him just from that. But, uh, so to cover all these paths, you need a ward, like, here or here. And again, I agree with you. This one is really, really good because you get that early warning. It also protects your mid lane better. But the trade-off is, you know, you're really far from your AD carry. And if the enemy bot lane is good, oh, the support's all the way up here. I saw him with my ward that I put right here. Uh, they're just going to all in your AD carry. And then he might die. And you're not keeping him safe. So the so trade-off is less distance. If you communicate with your jungler, you can both use your wards to cover pretty much the entire Yes. Map. So if you watch LCS games, like like whenever Riot Games streams, like all the pro players, Yeah, watch... a lot of it is in other languages though. Yeah, and, and that's fine because the game is still the same. Yeah. So even if it's in other languages, just put it on mute. You don't, you don't even need to hear that shit. Just watch where they're warding and think about why. Like if you watch a game and only pay attention to the wards, you'll learn so much because you're like, wow, 
right when the support's ward ran out, the jungler came down and dropped a ward in the same spot. And right when his ward ran out, the, the support rotated up and dropped a ward right there. And then both of them backed it at times so that their wards replenished so that they always had that vision down there, at least for the good teams. You can kind of tell the good teams from the bad teams because the coaches will have you know the vision line set up so that it's always up, so that it's always safe. And when they don't have that vision, which is why you have things like sweepers and pink wards, you know, maybe this is a ward, but you swept it, you know. And this one, it doesn't exist because you only had one ward. Well, now this part of the map is dark. And if you don't have information on where the enemy jungler is, that means that these guys are going to be playing back farther because it's safer. Or they'll try to control the wave so it pushes this way into them so they can't get ganked. So there's all this goofy little shit that the, the high elo, high skilled players will be doing. That if you just watch for it, you'll learn quite a bit. But you have to be like looking for it. You can't just watch the game because the announcers don't always point it out. Because most of the time it's boring. It's like watching a Lakers game, right? Like uh, Kobe Bryant, really good basketball player, plays for the Lakers, scores a lot of points. Nobody notices the guy setting picks for him. But there's a lot of setup in those like plays that they're calling to make sure that he's open to get the shot. But nobody pays attention to all that stuff that's kind of behind the scenes, behind the curtain. But yeah, it's that's there. Why, that's why a lot of people don't like playing so far, because they want to be the person getting the kills, not the person getting them the kills. It's not flashy, though. The way to think about support is if you're doing your job right, no one will even notice. Yeah, that, I don't know. I just love playing support so much. Like, even more than like cool. any other uh, role. Like jungling is fun for me, but I don't like mid or ADC. I like top as well. But... Yeah, well, and that's fine. You should play what you want. But but yeah. what I'm saying is the support is there's a lot of little tiny subtle nuances that you know aren't flashy. Like you're not going to be getting pentakills if you're playing support optimally because you're going to want to be feeding them to your carries so they get yeah. more gold so they can do more damage. But stuff like getting proper vision, like that's super important because it keeps your AD carry safe and makes it so they don't die. So generally, uh, this if you're on orange side, this kind of ward line is amazing. Because this is about the range, and it depends on the jungler. Again, Hecarim with Ghost and E up, his, his dash. Uh, maybe you want wards a little bit farther out, just so you can see him sooner. Because like if it's in a mobile AD carry, like a Jin or something, he's still going to have trouble getting away. But again, it depends, and it depends who you're playing. Because if you're like playing Thresh, you know, oh, I see a Hecarim coming. He's running through here. Jin is trying to run this way. Well, I can just intercept him and drop my box, you know, right here. So he has to run through that shit. Now he's safe. You, know, you, you can always do stuff like that. Or like you yeah, said, my, with Blitzcrank, you can pull him away. You know? my, my friend usually plays ADC when I play support, so we've got more communication, which helps nice. a lot. Nice. Yeah, and, and that helps a lot, too. He likes to play Misfortune, who set, has the one speed ability with her W, so that's helpful for avoiding games. Yeah, for sure. Like, she can make it rain and slow people down, too. Yeah. But, uh, so, when warding, early game, it's all about keeping your AD carry safe. So, uh, let me ask. Let's say you're pushed up to your tower and you're farming under turret. Where are you warding? Um, the ward up into the left, or the bush up into the left. Well, so maybe, uh, my, my first question would be, what level am I? Oh, if you're level 1, level 2, level 3 with full health, are you worried about getting dove? No. Yeah, it's, if they do, then you're just going to kill them, right? Yeah. Well, what about level 6? Uh, you, if you're low, you might have to worry about it. Yeah, if you're low. So so the correct answer, it depends. You know, and then ask yeah. a whole bunch of questions. So, sure, like if you're level 6 and like everybody on the map is missing, yeah, put put a ward there. Maybe put a ward here. So you can see people coming into your jungle. Maybe put a ward here. Shit. Uh, so ideally, you'd, mid would have this entrance covered. You would have this entrance covered here if you can't leave your AD carry because they're just going to jump on him. But you want something here just so you can cover you know, the dive potential. So you need to know if people are here is the information you're trying to get. Words to do that, probably these two. Because again, you know, your mid tower will cover this one. Your mid laner will cover this one. The minions will cover that one. Uh, these are important. Jungle can always help you out and like smite the wolves for you. You can always put a pink ward like in blue bush, something like that. But uh, that's what I would do. And if it's level three, I, I think the answer is none because you probably know where everybody is. I mean, the AD carry and support are right here. Mid lane, you can probably still see them. Top lane, you can probably still see them because you know laning phase is still going on. Jungle uh, could be anywhere. 
but you know he's probably not going bot because it'd be dumb. It'd be a waste of time because he's probably not going to get anything. If anything, he'd die. Kind of makes sense? Yeah. Alright, so, so what if the opposite was true? What if you are the blue team right now instead of the orange team? Where would you want yeah, your wards? Yeah, I was going to say, we're usually pretty aggressive, so that's a rare situation when we're under turret. Okay. But um, when we're like in, in the middle of the lane, like it's balanced out and the bushes to the side like at the very bottom of the map if they're like if they keep going so into there to try and yeah well, well you're you're the blue team there, right now you know they're here they're not going to walk into these bushes so that, that doesn't make any sense to me you know yeah but like when we are like uh -huh. both in the in the lane actually not under turret oh yeah yeah and they, and they keep like peeking in and out of bushes and it's messing with us I well, usually ward the bushes, but then I don't have any to ward the other places to cover from the jungle. And that's fine, but uh, when are you worried about, you know, that bush being warded? Um, well, let's let's, like if they let's have turn the question on its head. they're hiding in the bush trying to get a grab, then okay. So might so what you're that. saying is, holy shit, this won't let me zoom in. Okay, there it is. This orange ass is a blitz crank. You're saying, you know, I'm just going to drop a ward in here so I can see you. Well, well, my question to you is, well, don't you have minions? Yeah. If Blitzcrank is in that bush and you know he's in that bush because you saw him, why don't you guys just stand behind the minions? Yeah, I guess. That's just a pretty dumb question. You know, and oh. then you have a ward. Because are, are you really worried about the Blitzcrank if you can just stand behind the minions? Guess not. I mean, it shouldn't be at least. I mean, maybe he runs out and tries to grab you, but I mean, if he runs over here and pulls you this way, I mean, what can you just do? Just walk away. Yeah, and this AD carry is gonna have to chase him, and I guarantee they're slower than the Blitzcrank with the speed buff up. Just, just walk away, DPS as you go, and you have a kit that you can dump on the AD carry to keep them back. They're walking through minions, so they're taking extra damage from these guys. You're not. So, like, like again, just, just position a little bit better. And then that means you don't have to waste a ward in lane. Because what happens if you waste a ward in lane? Then you don't have it for the jungler. Yeah, then you don't have it for the jungler, right? So so let's say, again, let, let me repeat the scenario. Let's say you're pushed up. You're the blue team. So we, we flip the map. You're, you're, your team is now this side. Right. Enemy jungler is the orange J. Where can he gank you from? Um, and, and who's the jungler again? Hecarim again, or do you want someone different? Let's go with Nocturne, I guess. Okay, well, what level is... That's a bad example, because he can jump from anywhere. Yeah, I was going to say, what level is he? Level 3, he can't. Yeah. Um, I guess, like, a Mumu. Yeah, let's say a Mumu. Okay, a Mumu's a good one, because he has to still get close. So where's a Mumu probably going to gank you guys from? Either River or... River? Like below Tribrush. Or he can, like, loop around in the enemy jungle and come, like, around here. Or he can do this route and come through here. He can maybe lane gank, depending on, like, how bad you guys are and how aggressive you are and how good the support is. Yeah. But uh, lane gank, you can't really you can't really play against. You just have to, like, not go ham when you don't know where he is. Uh, this one, what would be a good ward to, to stop both of these? And I guess you, you can have multiple wards. Um, where the Rift Scuttler ward goes? Like, yes. in the middle so of the So here would be amazing. Cover. Yeah, right there. It covers this entrance, and it also tells you if he's going this way, if he's going this way. So good. Okay, we got this one covered. Yeah, it'll help your mid laner as well. Yeah, okay, so what's left? Uh, try brush. Try brush, sure. But is there a better ward? And remember, you have more than just you, right? Like, your jungler should be warding, your mid laner should be warding. The bush next to red, like the upper one. Yeah, like like a really good spot for a mid lane pink ward is right here. Why? I, I pink there a lot when I'm jungling. Yeah, like that's not bad as a jungle. It's a defensive ward, but but it's not bad. Why is this one amazing? Um, it'll cover a, like a four way intersection. Yeah, it, it tells like what they could be doing, right? You know, because they can come this way, it'll catch them. If they come this way to steal your chickens, it'll catch them. If they come this way to like hook behind mid, it'll catch them, right? So that's really, really good. You can put a ward there. Mid lane can put a ward there. Um, another place you can put it, like let's say people keep walking through that bush and they keep clearing it, 
put it right at the edge here. It won't let you see if your mid lane is about to get ganked, but it'll let you see anybody hooking around here. And also protect your red. And I'll also see if people are doing dragon, because often they'll put a ward right here. So that's a place you could do. Uh, another place, like another right answer right here. Because this one, what does it do? Um, it's another four-way intersection. Yeah, it co covers this entrance. Yeah. So, if you do this, the, the way I think about it, like, when I see the map, I see it as entry point, entry point. You need to have these two things covered. Oh, look, on your side, entry point, entry point. Right? So, it doesn't matter what side of the map you're on, because it's symmetrical for the most part. But you want to make sure these spots are kind of covered just so you can see where people are coming in and out of the jungle when they are crossing that river. So as a support, you're on the bottom side of the map. If you're on this side, jungler can come through here and gank you, can come through here and gank you. Unless it's something goofy like a Rek'Sai or a Nocturne, like you said, that has a global alt. But generally, those are the two spots. And, and again, it depends like who's where. So those are really good defensive wards. And again, if they're they're like looping around, maybe you want a ward like farther up here so you can see so that pink ward there is good, pink ward here is good. Because sometimes if the jungler is here in tri brush and you're up here, it's already too late. Yeah. Like if it's that Hecram again, right? And you have your ward here. And you see him right here. Let me get rid of the, the arrow so you can just see it a little clearer. And he didn't have this one because he walked through here. So there you go, you see Hecarim right here. Can you escape? Probably not. Probably not. Like, maybe you get out, because like everybody always can screw up, but if the Hecarim and his bot lane play perfectly, and you play perfectly, you should die. At least one of you should die. Yeah, he'll just shove you into his team. And you can always outplay, but I'm saying if they play perfectly, and don't let the outplay happen, if he uses his ult perfectly, if he uses his E to shove you into his team perfectly, if your su if their support chains CC with him perfectly, if their AD carry doesn't miss a single spell or, or auto attack, somebody's dead. So again, why not just you know put this up here? Because how is he going to even get here? Well, he's going to come through here, right? I would rather see him up here than down here when it's too late, because this gives me you know this much space to you know prepare. And like, oh, I see him here. We need to start backing up. Done. Maybe, and what you do, maybe because you see him there, you collapse on him. And then your mid laner can come. And suddenly, instead of getting ganked, you're ganking him. And he has to, like, flash over the wall or ult over the wall. And now he doesn't have a gank or a summoner spell for, like, the next five minutes or three minutes or whatever. Kind of makes sense? Yeah. All right, so let's say these are more defensive. Let's say you wanted to play more offense. So when we were jungling and talking about jungling, uh, did we talk about warding the enemy jungle? Yeah, you said uh, put one in between their blue and Grom. Yeah, so like here, and then where yep. was the other magic spot? Um, pointing on my screen like you'll see it. And it's uh, <laughs> right under mid turret, right there, yeah. Yeah, like this one, right? So, so why is this one really, really good? Because they won't check it with the auto walk feature or whatever. Yeah, well, if it's green, it's invisible. But, but if it's pink, yeah, yeah they, they won't check it. It'll stay there forever. But why is it a really, really good place for just a ward? Pink or green? Why is um, this vision, why is this information important? It's a lot of places you can see, like directions they'll be walking and stuff. Yep, also mid lane, if they like mana, they'll be coming here to get blue. It just shows you a lot of stuff. So as a support, let's say that the jungler ganks top, you know... He's up here. He just ganked top. Maybe he got a kill. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. But you know he's not bot because he's top. And, you know, enemy team is up here. Your AD carry got poked down. He's like, hey, I just shoved the lane in. You know, I got my BF sword. I'm going to back. You know, and he lets you know because he's a good guy. And you're duo queue of him, right? Yeah. Uh, so what can you do? Because you know the jungler's top. You probably see top lane. You probably see mid lane. What can you do? Go ward. Yeah, go ward. Uh, do the same wards you do as the jungle. Cool. Now the jungler doesn't have to do it. And if the jungler's bad, the jungler won't do it, right? Yeah. But 
your job is to do anything that can help the team. So let's say the jungler, maybe the jungler is getting shit on, or maybe the jungler has to stay top to like deal with this jungle's pressure. But if you get these two wards in their jungle, what can that help your jungler know? Where the enemy jungler is? Yeah, because this tells you what half of the map he's on, right? Yeah. So let's say you have these two wards, and you don't see the enemy jungler here. Where is he probably? His top jungle. Yeah, so if he's in his top jungle, what does that mean you can do as your really aggressive supports bot lane? You can be even more aggressive. Yes, you can make plays! You can flash into him and stuff like that that normally you wouldn't dream of because the enemy jungler could be up here doing gromp and ready to eat you. But if you know he's not doing gromp because you have a ward and you know this pink ward's here and you didn't see him go into his jungle because this ward lets you see if he comes here, this ward lets you see if he comes here, like you know for a fact that he's not going to be around. So if he's not going to be around, that means he's probably up here. Maybe he's derping around Rift Herald, maybe he's doing his red buff, maybe he's clearing his chickens, I don't know, but he's not bot. And these two wards tell you that. And it also tells your team that. And if they're good, they're seeing that. And they're getting the same information you are. So, um, something I wanted to bring up. How many games, like, what percentage of games do you think Rift Herald is taking? Uh, depends on the elo, but people are starting to figure out that it is broken. Rift Herald's another one of those things. Like, if you just get it on your team and they can use it well, like, think, like, tanky duelist split pusher type champion top uh it's another one of those five to ten percent probability of winning things that pushes you in the right direction so higher elos probably more people are taking it especially now that it's important in the lcs uh lower elos probably people don't even know what it does and, yeah, and especially I, from coaching I've never taken it in my life. but let's say you got that situation where oh ad carries backing you know hey i need to wait 20 seconds for an item you know, I'll be right there. Well, cool. Why don't you just roam top, kill someone? Maybe you tank Rift Herald for them. Get that. That's another way you can, you know, help your team out. Or you can roam top, ward up the enemy jungle the same way, you know, because maybe you see the jungler down here, right? You have a window to come up here. Where were the wards that are really, really good on this side of the map? Um, Let me erase all this other shit. It's getting, getting distracting. I remember the bush above red, you said if you're doing your red and there's like an enemy Shaco or something, then you can put that there to see if they're coming. It's so good. Like this is another one of those bushes that never gets checked, so pink ward there is amazing. Other one is like right here. And again, why are these two wards really, really good? Because a lot of intersections. Yep, it tells you what half the map they're on, because they're going to go this way or through this way. And when they go here, they can go this way to Krugs or this way to Chickens. Or, you know, this way to red. You know, and all these wards will just kind of tell you where they're going. Where they've been. And it tells you, again, what half of the map they're on. Because if they're on this half of the map, where are they not? At the other half. On the other half. And if they're not on the other half, what can you do but? Be aggressive. Again, it's the same stuff once you break down the patterns, right? Yeah. So there we go. So, so when you're warding... Just think about what will help my team the most. So sometimes if the enemy jungler is just a gank machine, just knowing where they are is enough to stop it. You know, and, and you're watching the map, like we said, because part of your job is like vision and awareness. So if you when you see them doing gromp, be like, hey, enemy Hecromon gromp. And that tells your team to back off. And you know, it, if your team is bad, you know, mid lane is still pushing up, even though, like, your wards, which are, like, here and here, see the enemy hacker just coming to eat them. I mean, that's on them, right? Because you did everything in your power to, to, like, keep them alive. But does that kind of make sense, the, the mindset of where to ward? Hello? Did I lose you? No. Okay, sorry. Um, what'd you say? I asked you a question. I, I know I've been talking a bunch, but uh, does that kind of mindset explain where you should ward? Yeah, just knowing where they are and what you can do. Yeah, and, and so mission. the purpose is to keep my AD carry safe and yeah. to also help my team. So if you can do awards, like, again, here and here, that keeps both your AD carry safe. That actually keeps top and mid safe, too. Because the jungler is more likely to be seen by these than he is by, you know, these wards. Or these wards, right? Depending on what side of the map you're on. 
just because he's definitely going to be here farming. He may or may not cross into the river at all. It depends on who he's playing, how aggressive he is, what his plan is, but but these will help a lot more than these. Now, the trade-off is it's really hard to get these unless you have information and you didn't have a good window to get in there. Because what happens if you're Blitzcrank and, you know, you go on a, a journey? Actually, where did I put you? Where, where's your any carry? Let, let me refresh this. <laughs> he was backing. He was backing, that's right. But let's say, like, oh... Hecarim's top, and you know, the lane is frozen right here. All right, do, 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 war, do, 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 and this is what you'd be singing, obviously, because that's the, the warding song. And then you circle back and come through here. How long do you think that takes to do? Probably about a minute. Probably about a minute. So what's happening bot while you're off derping and doing that, singing the song? Your ADC is getting 2v1. Your AD carry is getting 2v1. So if the enemy team is good, let's say the minion wave is frozen here. Uh, where are they standing? Where is your AD carry standing? Behind minions. Uh, behind minions. So, like, here? Like, what do you mean by behind? Because depending on who you're talking about, this is behind or this is behind, right? Uh, well, usually, like, inside them. Inside so they them? they don't get hit by skill shots. Okay. Let me rephrase this. Like, right. here is your minions. Here are their minions. You just went up here, and they probably saw you with their wards that they have here, because you're the blue team, they're the orange team. So when you go up here, what are they going to do? Uh, be aggressive. They're going to be aggressive. So where are they going to be standing? Are they going to be behind their minions, just letting your AD carry farm? No, they're going to try and attack it. Your AD carry is going to be back here, and they're going to be standing here, probably dancing. And then this wave will be killing this wave, and every time it's about to like kill a minion this AD carry will like right click it once and be last hitting and this AD carry will be zoned out of experience and gold so again just because you can do it oh jungler's top hooray I can go ward and sing the warding song well remember one of your jobs is what to protect your ADC yeah to make sure they can farm and get strong so if you're doing this when the enemy bot lane can just shit on them you're, you're not doing one of your jobs so you're getting an F minus on that job, even if you're getting an A plus on vision control. Yeah. So the trick to being a really good support is finding those windows where you can do all of those jobs at the exact same time. Kind of make sense? Yeah. So, so better would be, I don't know, win a trade, force the AD carry back, then go do it when you see the jungler top. But you know the, that timing all has to line up. And that's why most support players will only get wards, you know, like here and here, because they don't have enough time to actually go up and do that without the AD carry, like, losing a whole bunch of golden experience. So what do you do if the enemy jungler is camping your lane? Camping your lane? Uh, that is a compliment, by the way. That means he thinks you guys are going to be the ones that will carry. So first of all, what you need to do is watch my good friend Aoki's stream. Have you ever seen him? Have I ever hosted him? So, Aoki is a guy that has a million mastery points on Leona, who you said you want to learn. He is also a huge troll. So I'm going to post his link in Twitch chat. I'm going to post it here. But but a troll in a way that wins games. Um, I posted it in Skype for you, too. Uh, he's pretty entertaining, too. But uh, think about it this way. If the enemy jungler is camping you, first of all, how do you know he's camping you? Um... Well, like, every time you try and make a play, he just comes out. Well, first of all, why are you trying to make plays if the enemy jungler is bot? Well, I don't know. The first or second time, we just assume it was, like, a one-time gank, and then we start realizing that he's just chilling there, well, ready well, to jump us at any time. Well, again, what is your job as a support? The first job is keep your AD carry safe so they can farm. Second job, anything to help the team. Third job, vision, right? Just general map awareness. Fourth job, warding to provide more vision, right? Yeah. So you're failing two of your jobs if the jungler is able to jump you. Actually, you're failing three of your jobs. I would, I would technically say you're failing all four of your jobs now that I think about it, if the jungler is able to get a gank off. So what do you need to do to make sure you don't get an F- minus on all four of those jobs? Make sure you're doing them. Yeah, so, so what's the first thing you do? Uh, enemy jungler is orange. It, well, if he's going to camp you bot, where is he going to gank from? Um, I'll give you a hint. It's the exact same answer as before. 
behind Whoop. or to the side of you. Behind or to the side, maybe a lane gank. I don't know. It depends on their team cap, right? If it's Nocturne or Pantheon, they can just jump on you. So what do you need to know to see if they're going to do that? Where they are. Yeah, where they are. So ward, ward, you know, or ward, ward, so you can see where they are, right? So if you have wards and you see that the, like, let's say you have just pretty standard wards and you notice the enemy jungler, well, he just went here. Is it time to make a play bot? No. No. What's it time to do? Back up. Yeah, back up. Now, if you are a next level player like Ioki, what should you really do? Um, jump him. Jump him. Eh, no, Yoki, Yoki isn't that smart. Now, I agree with you. Like, yeah, okay. Hecarim's in our jungle. Lane is frozen here, so they're not going to, like, push the lane into our tower. We're not going to lose gold. Yeah, just jump him. And only do it if you know you can win a 2v1 or if the mid laner is coming or if your jungle's around. Because what will probably happen is these guys will follow. And if you start doing a 2v1 and then these guys come, you know, it's just a gank just on a different part of the map, right? Yeah. But if the jungle and mid are there, now it's a 4v3. So that's amazing. So, so again, do the math in your head. Be like, can we kill the jungler before the enemy bot lane comes? Do I have reinforcements from mid and my jungle coming? Do we have a teleport top or like a shin top or something that can help us out? Or yeah, gangplank like ult? Or pantheon ult? Something like that, right? So so, so think like that. But um, So Ayoki doesn't do that, though. When he sees the enemy jungler coming, because again, he's a good support, so he has wards covering all the entrances, and he sees the enemy jungler down here. What does he do? And if you don't know, I can just tell you, because it's funny. Uh, I don't know. He plays a game called How Much of the Jungler's Time Can I Waste? That sounds like a fun game. It's a very fun game. So so let's say let's say he didn't get a chance to get this ward, but he totally has this ward in. You know, and and maybe there's like a pink here. So, you know, their ward coverage looks like this. Well, he sees the enemy jungler. Let's say it's Let's say it's like a let's say it's a, a Hecarim just because that's a fun champion, right? And let's say he's only level 3. So he'll be playing Leona. You know, the lane's, like, right here. Hecarim comes down here. He doesn't know it's warded, right? Yeah, you see him from this pink ward. He comes down here. So you could just back off, right? Because he's there. Why would we do anything stupid, right? And again, asking questions just to make sure you're, you're listening and you get it. Yeah. Uh, what he will do instead, like, if he's playing Leona, he will pretend to throw a Zenith Blade. You know, on the AD carry, but he won't throw it to hit the AD carry. He'll throw it to miss. Why will he do that? Because um, the jungler then knows that he can't use it for however many seconds. Uh, well, think about it this way: if you are jungling, what are you waiting for before you gank? Uh, we talked a lot about that. I have like a a list. Yep. Notes I wrote down like wards, cooldowns, stuff like that. So cooldowns. Yeah. Uh, if Help I'm man. if I'm against a Leona, what what do Leonas usually do? They throw out their pole and then they jump on the enemy you. team and go ham, yeah. right? So if you're a jungler and you for sure want to win a team fight, what what do you wait for? Them to miss. Uh, not them to miss, but them to make it. I want them oh. to jump in, blow all their CC. And cool. Now I jump in. Now it's a three v two, and they're on he cooldown. Just keeps missing it. Yeah. So 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 the jungler will be like recalling here, and then right when the recall is about to end, he'll throw his zenith blade, but he'll throw it a pixel to the left and miss. And then what happens is the jungler's like, "Oh, a fight's about to break out." Cancels recall. But he missed, so now he doesn't go in because it's like, "Oh, well, they're still back here. They're, they're still safe." But if he had gone in, you know, that was a sure kill for me. So if I'm Blitz or Thresh, just keep missing my grab? Yep. Well, and, and, and you're doing that strategically, right? Because yeah. if you land the grab, let's say you're up against a Thresh, and Thresh is level 6. What happens if you uh, hook the Thresh? He'll ult. He'll ult. He'll throw his lantern at Hecarim, and he's going to hook somebody, because you probably won't have enough damage to burst him down. He'll get low. He'll be like a quarter to a third health, sure. But now you're on cooldown, and an angry, angry Hecarim's running at you, and you're stuck inside a scary box of soul power damage. I don't know. I don't know how Thresh works. He's a weird champion. 
But but anyway, that's like a bait. He honestly wants to get hooked in that situation because the jungler's waiting for it. But because you know he's waiting for it, you're playing those next level mind games and you're missing on purpose. And what that does, what does that do? What does that do to the jungler? Wastes his time. What else does your team know? Where he is. Exactly where he is. So if your jungler's good, what is your jungler doing? Ganking mid and top. Ganking mid and top, because what does he know isn't waiting for him? A counter gank. A counter gank, sure. What else could he be doing? Stealing jungle. Yeah, he could be counter jungling. What else could he be doing while he's counter jungling? Warding. He could be warding. You know, what else could he be doing on the top side of the map that's really, really strong and broken, especially if you can get it on your top laner? Rift Herald. Taking Rift Herald. You know, he has all these things he could be doing because you are holding the attention of the jungler bot and just kind of baiting him. And if he goes in, you know, cool. Back up, spam mastery emote, laugh, stuff like that, right? Yeah. Makes sense? Yeah. I'm just entertained by that idea. Oh, watch Yoki. Uh, he does a lot of drunk streams and he pays way too much attention to the chat. So he dies quite a bit, but it's always entertaining, and he has all these mind game tactics that he likes to play with people. Uh, pretty fun to watch, and he's very good at Leona. He's been playing a lot of Zillion lately, but but still, like, he knows his shit. So what, okay, let's let's take a step back. So that's amazing if you know the jungler's there. How do you know the jungler's there? Vision. Vision, wards, right? So if you're getting camped bot, which was the original question, what do I do? What is the first step to not be camped? Make sure you know he's camping. Well, make sure you know he's camping. How do you know he's camping? Again, again we're just By stepping warning. back. By warning. Okay. Uh, where are you going to ward? Um, strategic places in the river so you can see multiple intersections. Exactly. And, and, and entrances to the jungle. And the, the two magical places are, like, if you're blue side, well, he's going to come from this point or this point. He can come from lane, but you can't really ward there. And if he's coming from lane, you should just be able to walk away, right? He can come from here, but mid lane should have you covered. And mid lane should be warding here. You know, or up here. And remember, like, if your team is warding properly, like, let's say the, your jungler has this lit up like a Christmas tree, or he has his two wards, right? And you don't see the enemy jungler up here. Again, where is he probably? In his bottom jungle? Yeah, in his bottom jungle, right? So even if you don't have wards, or maybe this one expired, you, you still probably know he's down here. So you're not looking for those flash hooks because he's probably going to kill you. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. All right, so if you're getting camped, first step, uh, make sure that you have wards to see where he is. Because if he's not there, the jungler literally can't be in your lane constantly because he'll fall behind. Unless you're just bad and feeding him kills left and right. Yeah. So... Make sure he's there. Wards will let you know if he's there or not. And, and you know, the ones that cover this entrance and this entrance, when you're on blue side, amazing. Let, let's say you were uh, the orange team. Where would you want to ward to, to keep yourself safe? We talked about it already. I'm just reviewing now. Uh, you're, you're the orange ANS now. Where can they gank you from? River or... If you're orange? Yeah, if you're orange. So, they so, will be coming from Tribush, so probably... They could be coming from Tribrush, actually, because you're on this side of the map now. Remember, yeah, remember we did it earlier? They could do this, they could do this, or they could do like something like this and come from here or here. Because yeah. they're probably coming around like this. They could also do something crazy like this, but that's insane because they're taking tower shots for that. But yeah. uh, Tribrush, you need covered so you can see that coming. And remember, they're going to loop around so you'll have some time to react, or you need a ward up here or here just so you can see them coming through here. This one's good because you need to cover at least this entrance. This one's good because you can see this entrance too. But ideally, at least this, and just so you can cover all those squiggles we just drew. Alright. You, you following me? Yeah. Alright, so let, let's do it again. Blue side, where are you warding? What do you need warded to know? Um, above or near red in the bush, so you can see them ahead of time. Yeah. So. And then... So something here, something here. And again, that's to cover this entrance and this entrance, right? Yeah. And this one's better just because you can see it'll protect your mid laner a little bit better. This one's good if you have like mid laners that are doing this kind of shit or this kind of shit too. Make sense? Yep. 
All right, cool. So first step, ward, so you can see where the jungler's coming. And if he's camping you, and if he's down there, what's the next step? Waste his time. Waste his time, yes. As much of his time as possible. Because if he is not farming, what is happening to him? He's getting behind. He's falling behind. And if he's falling behind, uh, who is getting ahead? Your jungler. Your jungler. So waste as much of his time as possible. Now, are, are we is, going... If he's waiting in that bush that he was waiting in earlier... Yeah. Is that taking XP from bot lane? It is. I mean, it depends where the minions are, but it, but if they're, like, here and here, I think the way it works is it's something kind of like that. It's a little bit smaller. I'm just bad at drawing circles in this program. But figure, so, like, yeah, he'll be leeching experience. Yes. Yes, it is. And now, what what will happen? Like, down in bronze, do people usually have a lot of patience? No. Now, so, so what if he gets impatient? What, what might he do? Uh, go in for the kill. Yeah, he, he might go in at, like, a shitty time. He might tower dive. He might try to force something, right? There's actually a really funny thing that happened to my friend and I when he was playing this fortune and I was Blitz. Uh -huh. um, their Darius teleported bot, and there was a Yasuo from their mid waiting in the... It was, like, not Tribush, but the one to the left and below it. He's just waiting there for, like, 30 seconds, and I went on, like replay.gg to watch it over again because it was really funny. <laughs> nice. And the Darius teleports bottom. I pull him under turret, we kill him, then Yasuo decides to flash him and then he misses his Q, I knock him up and then he dies to turret. People are me. bad and get impatient and try to force stuff. All It's, it's not over though. I knocked <laughs> him up and he died to turret but he ignited me so I died. But then both of bot lane decides to turret dive my ADC and he kills both of them. Nice. So funny. Yeah. Like, we, were, we were laughing really hard after that. So doing this and just not going in and being patient is amazing. Because you can set up like the enemy team to do dumb shit like that. Uh, do, do you know who Bobby Knight is? You, you might be too young. No. Bobby Knight was one of the most winningest basketball coaches ever. He coached Indiana University. He was notorious for losing his temper and throwing chairs and like punching players and stuff. But he was also a really smart guy when he wasn't a rage monster. And one of his quotes that applies to, like, every sport, essentially, is usually the team that wins is not the one that makes the flashiest plays, but it's the one that makes the fewest mistakes. I think I've heard that quote. I just don't know who said it. Bobby Knight said it. Really smart basketball coach. Old now. If you're watching March Madness, he's one of the old guys in, like, a red sweater just that they're asking stuff. And you're like, who's that guy, Dad? I'm like, I don't know. But... Really good coach, really smart guy. Had had a temper tantrum problem, but but anyway, that, that's irrelevant. But his quote: "Whoever makes the least mistakes wins." Is how you get better at league. You minimize your own mistakes, and what that does is it forces the enemy team to like make more plays, which are riskier, which has more opportunity for error. And when that happens, you just shit on them. So as a support, you know, just things like having a ward here and here lets you know what the enemy jungler is trying to do and it can allow them to make mistakes like if you're playing the waste the enemy jungler's time with your blitz hooks i mean you can keep this guy down here for like a minute if you get really good at that game and while that's happening he's gaining nothing he's leeching exp off of his bot lane making them weaker you know all these they're things are happening raging at him for not going in. They're raging at him for not going in. Maybe top lane dies. It's like, stupid jungler, where's my gank? You know, there's all kinds of things happening, right? And it's all because you have that ward there and you're playing patiently. This is a lot easier to do when your AD carry is on the, the same comm as you and you're talking on the same level. Yeah. Okay, makes sense? Yeah. All right, so, so I'm going to go back to what we were actually going to talk about because we, we, we're getting there, but we're taking kind of a long roundabout way to do it, right? Yeah. So... We we're kind of covering where, when to ward. And where, when to ward depends on what is the best way for me to do my job, which as support are these four things. And now two, you know, do anything to win the game. That's kind of vague, right? But early game, it's all about keeping your carries safe, carries plural, mainly the AD carry, but also mid lane. Like this ward, remember, it protects the mid lane. If you get wards in the enemy jungle, like we talked about, that protects every lane. That protects your entire team because it gives you vision on what side of the map they're on. And again, I'm going to keep asking because I want to drive this point home. If the enemy jungler's not here, where is he? The other half. The other half. 
If he is here, where is he? Not at the other half. Not at the other half. He's here because you see him because it's an easy question. <laughs> you know, so just knowing that gives your team so much information because if he's on the other half, he's not here. He's over here somewhere. We don't know where, but he's over there somewhere. What does that mean you can do, bot? Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Go ham. Make the flashy LCS big plays because you know they're not risky. Uh, if he's down here, He's somewhere in here. We don't know where he is. Maybe your wards are up here. But you know he's not there because you don't see him. So what are you going to do, bot? Uh, don't go in. Don't go in. Play like a complete pansy. You know, be the wimpiest, most scared Blitzcrank ever. Or uh, if you know, even if you don't have wards, that he's probably waiting in the wings, you know, play the miss the hook game. You know, it's fun. It wastes their time. It gets their hopes up, and then it's kind of like... It's kind of like, 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 you know that one girl that's kind of teasing you. She always is playing hard to get. You know, she, she lets you get just close enough, and then you think you're gonna get that first kiss, and she gives you a handshake and a good night. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're trying to do that. You're trying to give the the Hecram for. I'm trying to think of a metaphor that isn't rude and coarse, but you're essentially trying to give the Hecram blue balls. All right. If you if you're picking up what I'm laying down, you're, you're trying yeah. to make him think he's gonna get some, but but no, sadly he's not. You, you know, you're teasing him. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of a horrible way to think about it, but I, I'm lacking. If you guys can think of a better metaphor for making a, somebody think they're going to get something and then denying it in a kind of a sneaky way, let me know. But, but I think that's pretty good. Yeah. It's just kind of rude. I don't want to offend any grills that may be watching. But kind of makes sense? Yeah. All right, good. Good. Okay, let's go back to your list. So so the first one, where slash wind award, wherever you can get information that lets you do stuff like that. Okay, so why is Sightstone good? Uh, so you can do that more often. So you can do that more often. It's essentially a gold over time item because it gives you, if you just buy the first one, right, how many wards? Four. Uh, I think three. Four is the Ruby Sightstone. Oh, right, yeah. Or, or one of the upgrades, you get you get more, right? And how long do those wards last on the Sightstone? 150 seconds, I think. Yeah, it's pretty much three minutes. Just, just round up. How, how long do the Trinket wards last? It's based on level. We went over that. It's I think based on level. Two minutes. But but let's put it this way: not three minutes, right? Yeah. So sightstone's good and better than trinket just because cool. I have more information from my vision, and I'm placing wards in these optimal spots. So now that means you know I have more vision for longer in these spots. It gives my team information that lets them do plays. And I know like down in silver or bronze, sure. Like you, your ranked team, you said was bronze five. Maybe people aren't even looking at the map, but you are because you're a good player. And you can be spamming, hey, Hecram's there, and danger pings and stuff, and make your teammates better by taking that vision uh, burden on yourself. So, so again, it doesn't matter. You still need to be doing this if you're going to carry as a support. Yeah. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, I think and, that's covered. And, and we can do the math on the site stone on why it's cost efficient and when it pays for itself and when it starts making you money, but or you can just take my word for it and buy it first item. Yeah. Now now there's a situation where you would not buy it first item and, and you mentioned, hey, item variety went to build different situations. Can you think of when you wouldn't need a site stone bot lane? When you got a jungler with tracking knife? Ah, uh, that's that's one way to think about it, but that's cheating. Let, let's say, let's say it has nothing to do with your teammates. Let's say it has everything to do with these four players right here. Uh, if you have like an Ash. Nope. Although I like where your head's at because she can scout the map with her her E right and kind of give you that information. Yeah, but you can only use that every minute, right? So yeah. that's iffy. Uh. Very specific situation. You want me to just tell you because it's kind of kind of vague and weird. Sure. Uh, let's say that they are just going to push the wave as hard as possible constantly. Like they have a sieve, and all she's doing is like spamming her W, the ricochet, so, so it goes everywhere, hits all the things, and they're pushing you into tower. First of all, if you're pushed under tower, is the jungler going to gank you, especially early levels? No. Why not? Because then he'll have to take tower hits and. Your tower is like an extra player, basically. Yeah, it's essentially picking a 3v3 where the one player is insanely fed, <laughs> and you're yeah. probably all going to die. And if the enemy jungler comes, it's a 4v3 because we're counting the tower as a fed. You know, it kind of looks like a player, right? It's like a Statue of Liberty thing going on. Yeah. But, uh, it's got a head. It's got a head, sometimes. 
But, but anyway, so he's not going to do that because it's a risky play, and he'll probably die, and then his teammates will make fun of him. You know, his girlfriend will dump him. He'll lose his LCS contract. You know, it's just not worth it. So he's not going to do it. So if the jungler's not going to come ever, do you need to buy Sightstone to see him? No. No, so, so what might be a, a better item to buy, especially if you're on Blitzcrank or, or Thresh or Leona? Uh, well, I, I always rush face the mountain. I don't know if that's a good thing. Actually, yeah, it, it would be amazing. So if you're pushed in, what are they probably doing to you, at, uh, the enemy team? Um, they're trying to make you lose farm. They're trying to make you lose farm. How are they going to do that? Like, like you have minions. Your tower to attack you. Uh, your well, you, their minions are right here. Your minions are coming in because they already cleared it, right? Yeah. So while you're trying to farm, what are they doing? Attacking. Yeah, they're probably harassing, right? They're probably poking you down, and that's to make you have to worry about dodging skill shots instead of last hitting. So, uh, why would the face of the mountain, and specifically, um, you would start with the relic shield, right? What does that upgrade into? Targon's Brace. Targon's Brace. So look at what Targon's Brace gives you compared to Relic Shield. Yeah, I'm just going to pull it up on the wiki. Is the screen share still working, by the way? Yeah. So here, let's do this. Let's look at Relic Shield first. So Relic Shield, you get 75 health. You get gold over time, so that's pretty good. And then you get a unique passive. The passive is really helpful. So it helps your AD carry last hit under tower. Maybe their mechanics suck. Well, cool. You can help them last hit. And, and every... And it gives health, so you have sustain, so if they're trying to poke you down, cool, you're just healing back up, whatever. And it recharges every 40 seconds, so it's pretty good. Now, you could get Sightstone after this. Maybe if you're pushing up and being the aggressor, well, you need wards so you can do that safely, right? Yeah. Well, in this situation, you're not. You're being pushed into the tower, which might be fine. Like, I don't know, maybe you have a cog ball in here, and you don't want to ever fight until you get two items. So what if we got Targon's Brace? Look at what it gives you. Remember, the first one gave you 75 health. This one gives you an extra 100, right? You have health regen, so this means you'll be healing off their harass. Still get the same gold per second. Oh, but look, now you have three charges, and it recharges every 30 seconds. And you're healing for even more, right? Yeah. Kind of makes sense? Yeah. So in this situation where you don't have to worry about tracking the enemy jungler and keeping your ready to carry safe bot because he's already safe, he's under tower, uh, get this item, it'll help him last hit, it'll give you more gold actually because every time you last hit with one of those charges, you share the gold. So you're just getting more gold, playing safer, and you're healing for more so you can negate their harass. And it's closer to the face of the mountain or eye of the equinox, both are good items. Yeah, my one of my friends tells me to get eye of the equinox instead of face of the mountain when we're being super aggressive, and I think I understand why now. Yeah, because you, you get those wards, so you can see. And how many wards does it give? I think it gives four. Yeah, four charges. Sorry, I was reading through that big, long paragraph. And you also get the four, you know, Relic Shield charges. Or I guess Eye of the Equinox charges now. So you get the so extra health, you get the extra gold income. Would it be a good idea to get Eye of the Equinox instead of um, Sidestone? Uh, well, I have the Equinox builds out of Sightstone. Oh. Yeah, look at the recipe down at the bottom, right? I usually get the Ruby Sightstone if I get it, which is rare. Uh, well, it depends. So, like, like I played a Pantheon support game the other day, and I got Eye of the Equinox just because I wanted more item slots. So you can think it, it depends on the support you're playing. So you could get this. Uh, maybe you have an AD carry that's squishy and you have to protect him. Face of the Mountain gives you that amazing active... Uh, the shield, right? Yeah, I use that all the time. So Face of the Mountain has a little more utility for keeping people alive, but if you need an extra item slot, because you're going to go that, like, Muramana Blitzcrank for whatever reason, you know, maybe you go Eye of the Equinox, and then you have both your Sightstone slot and kind of your support item slot in the same slot. It's yeah. just it's just options. And this one's I also a little cheaper. A lot. Like, I just forget. Uh, Face of the Mountain is one of the ones I, like, since I buy it so much, I, like, I count it as, like, an extra ability, basically. Yeah, and Blue Note A in chat has a good point. Um, I have the Equinox is cheaper, because both of these items, 2200, 2200, but if you're getting Face of the Mountain, you're also getting Sightstone, that's an extra 800 gold. So, 3000 gold for Face of the Mountain and Sightstone, 2200 gold for still all the support stuff, actually some extra health, and, you know, you have both. So, so again, it depends how you play. It depends what you're trying to do. 
this like lets you get a little stronger faster so if you need wards faster and you don't have time to sit back and farm up enough gold for face of the mountain maybe the laning phase ended faster just do this uh if not and you need to like protect people on your team face of the mountain might be better right. and, and we can talk about that more but again that's the one situation where i wouldn't rush sightstone when you're being pushed in and you know that you're not in any danger so you don't really need the wards to see that because you, you still have your uh, your trinket wards, right? So you can always use those to like tag a bush to like find the AD carry of one health trying to get away, or you can put a trinket ward up here if you're worried about them doing dragon, like if they have a fiddle six or a new new or something in the jungle. But generally, yeah, that's, that's the way of, to think uh, about it. Sorry. Yeah, go for it. Uh, speaking of the trinket, when would you switch it out for the red sweeper? Uh, the red sweeper. Uh, think about it this way: if you have a sight stone, uh. Do you need your trinket? Probably not. How many wards can you have on the map at once? Three. Three. So trinket, you have two charges. That's two wards from that. Sightstone, you have four charges. You have four wards from that. How many of those can you use at once? Three. Yeah, three. So so half of them. So what most people do is when they get the sightstone, that's when they upgrade the sweeper. All right. And then at level nine, you get the oracle thing? At level nine, as a support, you want to upgrade your sweeper to a sw to the the upgraded sweeping lens. You know, the one that follows you around. Oh, I don't I don't know what it's called. Uh, here, let me. I think the sweeper. the first one is Oracle something. Do, do, do. I, I don't know which one you're talking about, so that's why I'm doing this. So you have warding totem yeah, and sweeping lens. Right. Ah, okay, cool. I thought you were talking about the this the far sight one for whatever reason. But yeah, this one. You want this guy. You want to upgrade that. Right. This one is for uh, carries to buy. It's so they don't face check bushes. It's yeah, so. Can you place wards from super far away? Yeah, but remember they're visible and they have one health point. So this is generally like, hey, so AD like carry, scout Baron to make sure they're not doing it, or scout that bush to make sure we don't walk into a death bush. How far? Oh, four hundred people, four thousand units. Yeah, it's. It's like a Nocturne alt, like level one. Oh. So it's so really, really far. Right. But but that's not as good on a support because part of your job is keeping your team safe and also making the enemy team unsafe. And you can do that by clearing wards. Because as a support, you know all the good warding spots, right? Well, if you know all yeah. the good warding spots, you know where the enemy support is likely to ward, right? Yeah. So if you have this, you can get rid of their vision. If you get rid of their vision, suddenly are, are they doing a good job no no they're not they're, they're failing things and now your jungler can come gank your mid lane can come gank your top lane can teleport behind them you have a bunch of things going on okay yeah chat's asking who we're talking to this is conch noob do you mind if i share your op.gg in the chat yeah that's fine my twitch name is nopples oh your twitch name is nopples okay cool they were asking if this is nopples because it's some of the guys that were talking to you last night yeah, they were very helpful. Oh, it is. Cool. I didn't make the connection because everybody has different names on every system that they talk to me with. Yeah. So apologies. But yeah, generally you want to get the, the sweeping lens and the oracle alteration when you already have wards from another item. So you get your sight stone, you upgrade to like whatever sight stone upgrade you're going to get. Cool. You don't need your trinket anymore, so get this. Also, you might get this earlier if there are stealth champs on the enemy team. Think like a Rengar. Like a Shaco? Shaco. Think like a Shaco. Think like a Vayne. We were playing against a Shaco earlier. Today Think Wukong. In a game, and uh, I would just like place a pink in, like, in the middle of lane when yeah. he was missing, and we would like he couldn't do anything because we would just see him right away and he'd run away because he's scared. I mean, yeah, that that's how you beat Shaco in self champs. You see them when they're stealthed. Suddenly, like most of what their kid is balanced around isn't there anymore. So there you go. I uh, got a few questions in the chat. So uh, TY Double Gut er, has a few things. Just trying to help him out. Does he know how to prep minions under turret for his AD carry? So, do you know how to prep minions under the turret for your AD carry? Uh, I do not. Uh, so. All I know is that um, minion, like the melee ones, can take two hits from a turret and then you auto attack them. And then the ranged ones, you attack them, then they take a hit, and then you attack them again. Exactly. So, and you read that on the Elander's guide, right? Yep. So Earlier here, let, today. let me go to it. Good, good. Now, what he's saying is, okay, the melee ones. Do you need to do anything to those for the AD carry to hit them? Okay. No. 
Now, in case it's going to be auto, auto, and here's what he's talking about if you, if you guys are watching the stream and have no idea what we're talking about, fam. But, um, so two tower shots, then he's going to auto it. Good. Done. Now, what about the caster minions? Uh, what does he have to do? Uh, hit it, then let the turret hit it, and then hit it again. Unless yeah. it's, like, super late game and you're draven and you want hit minions. Right, right, but it's not. This is, we're talking about early game before anybody has items. And you're getting shoved in by that Sivir, and it's really hard for your Ezreal uh, with, like, a, a freaking mana crystal for some reason to last hit. So what you need to do is auto-attack each caster minion once. And why does that make sense? So that he doesn't have to do it? Yeah, so he doesn't have to do it. Once. Exactly. Now, um, Blitzcrank's passive on his ult kind of messes it with that. But by the time you have passive on your ult, what does he have? His ult? Well, or an item? Well, yeah, he has items, right? You're level 6 at that point. I, hopefully you've backed at least once. He probably has an extra Doran's Blade, or he's started to build his first Infinity Edge or whatever. Or at least has a BF sword. The, one of the reasons most AD carries rush uh, the best friend sword is just to make last hitting easy. Easier. So at that yeah, point, he I, should have enough AD so that he, he doesn't need your help anymore. I really dislike Blitzcrank's passive ult, or ult passive. It, all it does is steal kills and steal CS. It's really annoying. Like, I wish I could turn it off. I don't want... You can't turn it off. You use it. I know, but then you steal the kill with your ult. You can always just stand away from kills and stuff. Yeah. And again, like by the way, there is no such thing up. as a kill steal in this game. Uh, it is actually better for the support to get the kills early. Uh, is it? Yeah, pre six minutes in like ninety percent of the matchups, it is better for you as a support to get the gold early. Why does that make sense? I have no clue. So, uh, what do you need as a support to be effective and do your job? Wards. Wards. What is getting one kill like first blood early let you get? way earlier than you should. Sightstone? Sightstone. So if you have Sightstone at like four minutes compared to like when you would normally get it, uh, what can you start doing? Warding. Warding. And you can start warding like places where you normally wouldn't have wards. Like, wow, you have a Sightstone at four minutes when the jungler is still like level three, level four. Suddenly his, his freaking thing is all warded up because for some reason you have first blood and second blood. Cool. Now we know exactly where the jungler is and they can't do shit. Do you kind of get what I'm... So, now it's weird. And there are situations, like if your AD carry is a complete douchebag and it just goes AFK because you took kills, even though there's no yeah. such thing as a kill steal because they still got assist gold, and now that means they have free farm because the enemy team is dead and they should be getting more gold anyway out of the thing, and you're helping because maybe you also upgrade your relic shield to, uh, you know, face of the mountain components, and now you're actually giving them more gold per second because you have more charges... So net, you're actually helping them get ahead faster even though they didn't get the kill. But but again, most players are bad and they don't think more than like five seconds ahead. Especially AD carry players. And again, apologies if there's AD carry players in there. Please be the change that I want to see and, and start thinking ahead. Yeah, a lot of the time I'll apologize for getting a kill as support. Never apologize. You know, uh, if they give you shit, be like, shh, quiet my support. Let me carry you. Actually, no, no, ignore that. Don't say anything. Maybe apologize, but don't mean it. Don't mean it hard, okay? All right. But it is fine if you take kills early. Now, on some champions, like let's say Draven has a fully stacked passive. Yeah. Fully stacked passive, then you let him get it. Or G18 Sneeze. It's like 366 extra gold, I think. It's, it's a shit ton of extra gold. So there are yeah, situations where you are bad. Draven and I would support him. And I actually have two friends that both play ADC a lot and I support both of them often. One of them used to play Draven, but now he plays mid. And then one of them, he used to play Ash a lot and now he plays Misfortune. But just because of the way Draven's kit works with that passive, it's actually bad if you kill steal from him when he has all that gold. That's the one time kill stealing is actually a thing. Uh, and also G18 Sneeze has a very important uh, point if they are going for a pentakill that that shit happens like one out of a thousand games you just let them get it yeah i'll never steal a penta that's good that's the unspoken rule because at that point like if they're about to get the penta even if they they die doing it you guys are still probably going to take an objective right so it probably doesn't matter yeah my friend who plays mid now he used to play adc he got hit 
his second Penta ever as uh, Oriana today, and it was his first time Oriana. She's in the free rotation right nice. now. Nice. Solid. And uh, if you look through my game history, um, it's mostly Blitzcrank games, and then there's a bunch in a row that are like different champions, <laughs> like in a row. It's like, uh, you might have to refresh it. It's like uh, Ezreal and Lulu and someone else. Okay. It's because you told me to try the free rotation. Yeah. Game oh, good, 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 good. I was trying some of the free champions so I can learn. Oh, maybe, and, and you're doing it in normals. I, I'm just saying do it in co-op versus AI because it's faster and you can just get the hang yeah. of their kits. But, I mean, if you you want to be ballsy and do it in normals, by all means. Although I, I don't know if I approve of the exhaust heal. I think that is just suicide. Yeah, I, I pretty much always do that as support, but if you're telling me to not... I, I would not do it. There is there is one champion that I do shit like that on. And it is Sejuani's support, and why would I be able to get away with that on Sejuani's support? I don't know. Uh, think about my kit. What in my kit allows me to get away with that bullshit? Uh, well, you have your dash, Naka. That's it, my dash. My dash is a flash on a 10 second cooldown. Oh. So, because of that, I don't have to take flash, but at the same time, I, I lose a lot of things. Like, I can't do my Q and then flash in the middle of the Q to extend it. I can't flash and cancel my alt animation. Uh, you lose a little bit whenever you do something like this. Now, what you gain is a whole lot of kill potential, because, like, I usually take Exhaust Ignite if I'm going to do this, but, but still, there's stuff you can do. Gee, Team Sneeze, first to the punch, damn. He, everyone's playing along at home in Twitch chat, that's what I'm talking about, by the way. Well, uh, I've noticed that a lot of the time, um, we'll heal at the same time, and if I'm sure you know for a fact that if you heal like in a small window of time, then the second heal is worth way less. Yeah, normally if you're taking heal exhaust, it's because your AD carry is taking barrier or cleanse. Sometimes my friend will go Varus with ignite and flash. That's I, I, again like once you start playing against smarter players, that'll get abused. Because if yeah, Varus but... is close enough to use ignite, like he's probably playing the champion wrong. And, uh, I just have always brought heal, I don't, I just consider it more of a support, uh, nope. summoner. Heal is for the AD carry, because they need it for the extra health, for the outplay, they need it for the extra movement speed. Uh, you want to take flash and some kind of spell that helps, remember, what, what's the job of the support? Ignite on, or not ignite, uh, exhaust on. Well, it depends. Um, usually, oh, exhaust or ignite are the ones you want. Uh, can you think of which one is better in different situations? Like, when would ignite yeah, be really earlier good? Earlier today, we were playing against the Soraka. I told you, and I considered taking ignite just to counteract her heals. Yeah, the grievous wounds is good. The extra true damage is good. I just I didn't want to because it was in our ranked promos, and I didn't want to do anything out of the ordinary for me. Oh, got it. Uh, by the way, do stuff out of the ordinary because when you push yourself out of your comfort zone, that's when you get better as a player. So so don't be scared of that. If you lose a couple games, whatever, as long as you're learning. Um, another thing to mention, um, Ignite. When do you take Ignite over Exhaust? I, and I don't care if it's a Sorak or if it's any other support. Uh, there is one correct answer here. When do you take Ignite instead of Exhaust? I don't know. Uh, do you want me to tell you or do you want to try to figure it out? Uh probably take a while for me to figure it out. But that's fine. It'll stick better. So, here, let's work through it together then. Uh, what does Ignite do? It applies Grievous Wounds, which makes heals worse for however long Ignite lasts. I yep. four seconds. Yep, so that's really good, because what do AD carries usually take in their summoners? Um, flash and heal. Yeah, so it makes one of their summoners worse. Okay, so what else does Ignite do? True damage over time. Yeah, true damage over time. So if you have true damage over time and you're making their heal worse, what is Ignite really, really good for? Just making it hard to heal? Uh, well, yeah, but that's not why I would take it bot lane. I mean, why not just buy, like, a, a Executioner's Calling at your AD carry. Now you have Grievous Wounds and you only spend 800 gold and you still have 15 AD didn't set you behind anything yeah so uh, simple question simple answers what does ignite help you do that exhaust doesn't kill people kill people that's it that's it 
So why would you take Ignite over Exhaust if Ignite helps you kill people? If you had trouble killing them without it? Uh, th think of it this way. Ignite is what you take when you have kill potential in the lane. And do you know what I mean by kill potential? Yeah, uh, we talked about it in the other session. It's like just enough damage and abilities to kill someone. Yeah, like are you playing Blitzcrank Draven bot lane? What, what does Draven have well, a lot of? used to. Uh, Draven has a lot of damage. Shit ton of damage. He's super strong early. Most AD carries are like really is strong late, weak early. Level one? He might be, but it depends what you mean by best. If you're talking like, from like DPS. Most DPS, I think, is what I meant. So imagine your blitz rank. You land a hook. You have your Draven. You know, and he just starts like critting because he has full crit page because he's trolling. But whatever, it works this time. And he lands every crit. You just have a shit ton of damage, right? Now, if you exhaust and they walk away with 10 health, that's sad. Yeah, but, but, but they you, can't walk away with 10 health if they're slow. Uh, they can, it's just slower. But I don't know, AD carry heals, uh, a bunch of things can happen. If you ignite, you know, you're doing true damage, so extra damage. Um, also, the AD carry's heal will be reduced by 40%, so it won't be as effective. It, it, you just have more kill potential. You have more ability to kill the enemy team. You have an extra spell that you can use to damage them. Because remember, you get kills by reducing their health below zero. So, so again, that's just all I'm trying to say. Now, Exhaust, let's say they have a, a freaking Janna or a Soraka that is staying so far back behind the tower that even if you land a hook, uh, you will never get her. And you'll hook the carry, and you don't have enough burst damage to take him down before she spams W for days or silences you or whatever. Like, you're just never going to kill them. Uh, maybe a, a better example might be, let's say they have a Nautilus support, and all he's doing is babysitting. Which means every time you try to go in, he just peels perfectly, and there's no way you can actually kill the AD carry. Last I, time I went up against a Nautilus, every time I landed a grab, he would just follow up with his grab and slow me, all that. Yeah, so he was just waiting for you to engage and then stopping it. That's one way you can play. You can just babysit that way. Uh, Jan is notorious for that. You know, you land a hook on the the enemy AD carry. She drops a shield and then tornadoes your face as he walks away and takes minimal damage. You know, or she has her alt, which is like the ultimate, you know, keep away spell. But uh, in those situations where it's just going to be really, really hard for you to kill people, exhaust is better. Yeah. Well, I, I usually, when we engage 2v2 and we're both like, it's really close, I'll just exhaust their ADC. So then he does like half damage. For I mean, level. yeah, you should. But I'm saying like, like if you have more damage than usual, like, like what's better? Exhausting the AD carry so he does half damage or killing him so he does no damage. Killing him. So if you can kill him, and Ignite will let you do that, it'll push you over the top, it's better to take Ignite because you can kill him. So again, if you have that really scary AD carry bot lane, like that Draven Blitzcrank combo where you land a hook and people just die, uh, Ignite probably better. But let's say you have something that takes a little time to scale up. Like let's say you have a Kog'Maw. Not a lot of damage early, right? needs two items before he gets really strong. Or in Ezreal, right, he need, he's going to rush a tier because he's going blue build, and he needs time to charge it and get his other items. Like, it's going to be a lot harder for you to kill people just because your AD carry doesn't have as much damage. Or like a Vayne, right? Vayne does percent health true damage. Well, do people have a lot of health early? No. No, so percent health isn't going to be good early. That's why she's so good late game, because now tanks have 5,000 health, and they're still dying in 9 autos, because percent health true damage is complete bullshit. I hate, I hate Vayne so much, you guys. But, but anyway, so if you have, like, that weaker AD carry that can't really complement your pulls and, like, kill people as easily, uh, Ignite not as good. You'd rather take Exhaust because every AD carry late game is going to have a shit ton of damage. Exhaust reduces their damage, right? Or if there's an Assassin, Exhaust will save your AD carry. Remember, one of your job is babysitting the AD carry so they can farm and get strong. Exhaust will stop people from diving you because it reduces their resistances, reduces their damage, slows them. It's really, really good, right? But Ignite better if you can just get the kill. Because if you can just kill the enemy AD carry, cool. That's more gold for you and your AD carry. You don't have to worry as much about being harassed out of lane. No jungler's going to gank for the support. They're going to wait for the AD carry to respawn. So when you have kill potential, Ignite. When you don't, exhaust. So uh, no more heal on it. I, I would never take heal on support. And for the reasons you stated, you know, our AD carry is probably going to use it at the same time I do. It takes too much coordination to kind of juggle it so you're not, like, misusing it. 
Also, you don't have flash, so you don't have an escape, so now you're painting a giant target on bot lane. Because if I see, like we played uh, that game the other day, and Soraka uh, in it took uh, Exhaust Heal. Like the one where Nick got his mod, right? Yeah. Uh, all we did was kill her over and over again. Like I was Singe Jungle, and it was the easiest thing in the universe to kill, because all I had to do was walk into her. Like, just don't do that. Take Flash. Then if the idiot Singe Jungle is running on you, just flash away at the last second and then hook him under tower or whatever. Yeah, I just don't know when to use Flash on support. Like, uh, uh, pretty much always. Think of it as a safety net. Like, if you screw up or you, like, lag out or the enemy team has a scary champion of a hook and there's no way to dodge it, you know, just Flash. Yay, you're safe. Or if you need to escape and jump over a wall, just flash. Yeah, you're safe. And then just play safer for five minutes. You can also, like, you're playing Blitzcrank, right? Uh, you can use it to land those flash hooks. Yeah, catch people off guard. Those. Well, that's because you don't take flash. You don't practice. Although here you are. Yeah, I've seen some true. flash games. Some I'm you don't, though. Doing it. And then on Thresh and our team games. Yeah, but, but trust me. There's a reason you see flash taken, like, 99% of the time in games, okay? Really, 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 really good, and you're you're gimping your team because like okay, enemy again here. Just think from a jungler's perspective. If I want to gank any lane, do I want to gank the lane where there's flash, or do I want to gank the lane where there's not flash? Not flash. Probably not flash, right? Because because why? They have no escape. They have no escape. They they're literally the easiest sitting duck target ever. So. What we say the AD carries, uh, the supports the job is, I'm sorry, not the AD carry. Babysit, do anything to win, ward. Yep. So, like, let's say you're warding and you don't have flash. Is that safe or not safe? Not safe. Not safe, not safe at all, because the enemy team knows you don't have flash. They're probably waiting for you to try to go ward, and then they're just going to shit on you. And yeah, now they have like, 5v4. I don't know. For some reason, I think if I go to ward, and then I get caught out, and then I flash. I just went over into their jungle just to waste my flash, and I didn't well, accomplish Why are you flashing into their jungle? Why don't you flash over the wall into your jungle? Yeah, but like if I go to ward and I get caught out and use my flash to get away, then... Let's say let's say you are doing what I we were talking about earlier. Anything. Well, you did. You, you got wards off, and you didn't die. Like Maybe it was a bad time to ward, but at least you didn't get your hand caught in the cookie jar and get it cut off. So, so let's say, you know, you're up here, right? And you don't know where the jungler is. You thought he was top, but you're coming up here. You know, you get your ward. Doo, doo, doo. You're coming around here. You know, and suddenly, the enemy jungler, who is a Hecarim with ghosts, just comes around the corner. And oh my god, he sees me. Comes over. And oh my god, the mid laner's coming over. And he has ghosts, right? Oh my god, he's going to jump on you. If you have heal exhaust, are you screwed? Yeah. Yeah, if you have flash, what can you do? Flash over the wall. Boop, now you're safe. And Hecarim of Ghosts, sure, he can catch you, but but whatever. You can, you have time to do your little chicken dance thing. You can laugh a little. Uh, your mid laner is now caught up. There's a reason you want Flash. Trust me, trust me. Okay. Take Flash. Okay. And, and that's just no. one scenario of about 2,000 that Flash is better than Heal Exhaust. And also, like you said, the AD carry is probably going to heal at the exact same time, and your heal is just going to be wasted anyway. Just so, yeah, the chat's saying it. Like, Chevolution, really, really good point. It just has so much more utility. You can use it offensively, you can use it defensively, you can, you can use it to flash into a bush and outplay people. So many things you can do. Alright. Alright, just, just trying to help you out. I mean, that wasn't even in our, our stuff that we're talking about. Okay, so we went over why Sight Zone is good. I'm going to delete that so we stop talking about it. Um, item variety, what to build in different situations. Do you want to go over that, or we can go over roaming next? Actually, we talked about pink wards too already, right? Yeah. Same kind of places um, where the jungle is, but let's say let's say jungler already put a pink ward here, and you're the, the team up here. I'm sorry, you're going to say something. What's up? Um, I've been told that using a pink ward at like Dragon or Baron is good, so that you can clear their wards. Think of it but, this way. That is definitely correct. Every time you back, you should buy a pink ward as a support. That's what I've been told. It's, oh, never leave base without a pink as jungler and support. I mean, even as a laner, you should probably never leave base without a pink ward. But people are bad, so whatever. 
But jungle and support, definitely, because you're playing more of a utility role to help your team. And also, as the jungler, you're, you're like literally controlling all these objectives that are all over the map. Always good to have a pink ward. Alright. So, then, yeah. Uh, and again, it's to... Oh, we're doing dragon. Well, you were watching the stream last night, right? Let's say you're, you're on orange side, and you're doing the dragon. Uh, where's your pink ward going to be? Let's say jungler's bad, didn't get a pink ward. Where are you going to put it? In the pit. In the pit? Why in the pit? Like here? Yeah. Uh, were you watching last night? I was, I probably wasn't paying attention. Let's say, let's say they have a Kha'Zix jungler on the enemy team. That was the, the example we used. What can Kha'Zix do? You guys are just, just doing you the... You can jump over and smite it. Yeah, you can jump over and smite it. Not only can you smite it, the dragon is isolated, technically. Uh, he can also Q it, which definitely outsmites your jungler. Unless it's like a Nunu. But he just jumps over, smites it, maybe he flashes out, he gets a dragon for free, and then he laughs at you in all chat. So what was the, the solution for this? How, how did we stop this from happening? Because remember, uh, if you're on this side of the map, the orange side, and you're trying to do that dragon, uh, where are all the places the enemy team can come from? Let, let's just draw them real quick. There, there, and this entire wall. Because everybody probably has flash at the very least. Most people have a bunch of goofy dashes and leaps because League of Mobility is a thing. So if they can jump from, like, over here, what do you want to do to the dragon to kind of negate this? Uh, put a ward over the wall. Well, put a ward over the wall, sure. That would be actually a great place for a green ward. And why is that a good place for a green ward? Because then you can see them. Yeah, you can see them if they're trying to jump over. Okay, but what else do you want to do? Do you want to just leave the dragon in the pit? Um, no. no. what do you want to do? Uh... Pull it out? Yep, pull it out. And make sure you say pull it out of the pit when you're typing in chat. Otherwise, everyone on your team will be like, that's what she said! And while they're typing that, the enemy <laughs> Kajiks will jump in and reset on all of them. And then they'll be like, that's what she said! E -E -E -D 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 -F -F -F. You know, all, all their abilities they were trying to say, but they were typing, so it doesn't work. <laughs> but, but yeah, you want to pull it out of the pit. So why do we want to pull it out of the pit? Uh, so they can't see it if they ward over? Yeah, so they let's say they ward over here. Uh, where is your pink ward again? Is it here? Uh, yeah. I don't think so. I don't think it's there, actually. If you pull it out of the pit and the dragon's right here, where do you want your pink ward? Uh, under the dragon. On top of the dragon. Why on top of the dragon? Uh, I don't know. Alright, so, um, if the enemy jungler is going to jump over to steal, when is the optimal time for them to jump over? When it's low. When, when they can outsmite the enemy jungler, right? When they can take it. Like, if the dragon has 5,000 health total, and it's like, you know, they're level 11, so their smites, you know, not, not doing 1,000 damage yet, uh, are they going to jump level in? does it do 1,000? Uh, 18. Oh. I think every level, it does an extra 50 damage. Okay. Okay. The, the only level I know for sure is 1, which is 309. So here, let's do this. Smite wiki lol. It's just <laughs> stuff I'll learn the game, I guess. Yep. So 390 to 1,000 based on level. So if you look at it, do, do, do. let's move this so you can actually see. Oh my god, wiki formatting. So level 1, 390. Level 2, 410. Level 3, 430. So it looks like it goes up 20. I lied. And then it starts scaling up. Do, do, do. See, I'm a, I'm a jungle main and I don't know this because I'm bad. Uh, well, part of the problem is... Eventually it's 50 per level and it gets up to a thousand, but my problem is they just display how much damage it does right on top of my smite So I just don't have to memorize it because it's just staring me in the face and I just yeah. know but anyway, so It let's say it's level 11. So he's doing 680 damage of his smite, right? We can see it right there And he has his Q figure like an extra couple hundred damage Let's say he can just do a thousand damage because he's nice and fat So if he can see the dragon's health, when is he gonna jump in to smite it? has like 2,000 not 2,000 because let's say it has 2,000 he jumps in and smites oh my god did this just reset come on rift kid you can do it uh, but he jumps in and does his full combo it we said it's going to do a thousand damage he jumps in at 2,000 you know you're dpsing a little so it's probably down to you know 700 health now is he probably going to get the dragon 
No, the enemy jungle is just going to laugh at him, auto attack at once, and then smite. So, so when it's... Well, you don't want to jump over right at a thousand, because then you'll just get out smited, right? Well, remember, the enemy jungler, if they're the same... Okay, so Kajix, he can do about a thousand damage, just because of his Q and the fact that he evolved his Q, and it does extra damage to isolated targets. Dragon's technically isolated, depending on where your team is standing. Um, could be isolated anyway. I don't know. So, so let's say for whatever reason he can do a thousand damage on the dragon. Uh, what is the what is your your jungler's smite if he's the same level? Let's say he's level eleven too. We just looked at it, right? Oh, um, if he's level eleven, um, six eighty, right? Six eighty, yeah. So figure seven hundred. Maybe he has an ability like who's your jungler? Let's let's just play pretend. Um, Pick a jungler, any jungler. A mumu is my favorite. A mumu, right? So. Can a Mumu burst down the dragon? Not really. I mean, he can hit E, he can use his yeah. Q, and that can burst it down a little, but is he going to get a thousand damage by doing that? No. Probably not. So so if Kajix jumps in right at a thousand damage, he can steal it, and then, you know, just flash out before anybody can react. And even if he dies, it's fine, because that dragon is worth so much gold compared to the death gold he's going to get. Yeah, Infernal's 3,000 is what you said late game. Yeah, and it... And it depends on your team, for sure, but it, but it's a lot. Yeah, we talked about that. Yep. Of course. So what happens if you pull it out of the pit? And you, you can't see it. And you put that pink ward. Well, he might see it. Let's say he has a ward right here. Uh, well, then you can kill the ward. Well, yeah, you have your pink ward there, so you can kill the ward. So let's say all the wards are dead because you, you, know, you put a pink ward because you're a smart support. What can't he see now? The dragon's health. The dragon's health. So does he know when to jump in? No. No, so... What does he have to do now? Predict or predict or guess. So people down in bronze and silver, walk around and try and see it, or, or walk around and try to see it, right? But if he's walking around, like who is probably hanging out? And I know Rift Kid crashed, but you know you probably have a top lane, a mid lane, AD carries doing DPS. You're the support, so you're zoning, and you have good wards in this area probably, so you can see him walking around because you you put a ward there and there maybe. Uh, your jungler is probably tanking if it's a Moomoo and he's tanking right here. So you have all these people kind of zoning and bursting it down. If he just walks in, he's probably going to get shit on. Probably. Yeah, so what this does is it... Remember what we said about Bobby Knight. What was that quote, right? The team that makes the most what generally That's loses. Most I, mistakes. The, the team that makes the most mistakes loses or the team that makes the least mistakes wins. I think that the latter is actually the, the right quote. Sorry, I'm just butchering things. So what you're doing by pulling it out of the pit and putting this pink ward right on top of it is you're making it so he is more likely to screw up. And if he's more likely to screw up, that means he's going to make a mistake, and the team that makes the most mistakes loses, right? Yeah. So there you go. You're just putting more pressure on him to, like, play better, making it harder on him. So that's why if you're contesting this dragon pink ward right here to pull it out of the pit. All right. Make sense? Yep. And that's what we were talking about last time. So, again, I'm just trying to reiterate it so it sticks. Yeah. So, yeah, always have a pink ward so you can do stuff like that. And let's say maybe you had a pink ward in here just so you could see if they were doing it. Well, no ward in there, right? So when you move your pink ward out here, uh, what do you know is not in the pit? Any wards? Yeah, because you already had it pink, so you already know there weren't any wards in there. So, cool. Now you have, like, double the range on your pink ward. Kind of makes sense? All right, cool. Uh, if you have any other questions about pink wards, just always get them and just be ready to put them in a place that'll help you out. And, and that help you out depends on what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to take dragon, put it in a place where it'll screw up the enemy jungler. Think so about, if, yeah, yeah. Can you use uh, your sweeping ones to remove wards as well? If you sure. Have for dragon? Yeah, sure you can. It does the same purpose. I just like the pink ward. Because let's say I do sweeping lens and I just miss a ward because, you know, Riot's vision is sometimes spaghetti-coded weirdly. So, like, maybe you miss one. Or maybe you sweep it and, you know, for whatever reason, you just miss a ward. I don't, I don't know. Or maybe they drop, like, a blue trinket or something. Like, like there's a whole bunch of goofy things. Or maybe, like, the, the support, like, after you sweep and your sweeper runs out, ward's over this wall. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of things. If you just have that pink ward, it doesn't matter. The advantage of the sweeping thing is it disables the wards, though. Right? Uh, yeah, it does disable them. 
but I mean, if you just have the pink, you can just see them and kill them, and then, uh, again, when they're dead, they're not going to do anything, right? Same thing. They're, they're very disabled then. Yeah. It's like stunning a player over killing them. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, death is the best CC. Yeah. Can't do anything when you're dead. Unless you're Karthus, but, but you know, whatever. That's weird. Or Yorick. Ne never mind. Never mind. Yeah, death is the best CC. Let's just stick to that. Alright. Uh... Hey, what's up, new guy in the chat? I do not work in Riot. We're just coaching our friend right now. I usually pay attention to the chat, but right now I'm going to be mostly ignoring you guys. I will go through every single comment after I'm done, but I don't want to be rude to our friend that we're coaching right now because I want to make sure he gets all the stuff answered. But hello, welcome to the stream. Alrighty, so what else are we got to go through? Pink wards, do you think you, you kind of know what to do? Yeah, place them in Dragon Pit or places they won't walk through. Yeah, places they won't walk through. And, and let's say, like, your jungler. Remember the magical pink warding spots? Yep. Well, how many pink wards does your jungler have? One. One. How many pink wards does everybody on your team have? One if they're good. One if they're good. So if your jungler has this place covered, where is, like, the place you want to put your pink ward if possible? In the other place? Yeah, in the other place. Because, I don't know, maybe this one gets cleared. Cool. You still know what half the enemy jungler's on of the map, right? Well, if he's good, he'll put his top side because you can't really go up all the way up there most of the time. Uh-huh. So then you can put yours in the bot side. Cool, cool. Melted your face. Hey man, have you yet to lose a rank game after viewing this stream how to win one on one? Nice man, glad to hear it. Sorry, I thought that was a question, but then it wasn't. It was just like a compliment. Cool. Keep it up, man. All right, Conch Noob, who we are coaching. What are, what are we talking about next? Let's go back to the list, because I want to make sure we get through, because we're like two and a half hours into this coaching yeah. session. Trinket, we already talked about when to use, how to use them, kind of, right? When to switch them out. Yeah, switch them out when you get your sight stone. Use the sweeper trinket. Use it whenever you think the enemy team has wards. Like, if you're worried about getting teleport ganked, use it bot lane to clear that ward behind you. If you know where the enemy support put a ward, get rid of it. Like, if you know the enemy, your jungler is trying to come through that area, just clear the ward. Now they don't have it, right? So that's pretty much when to use it. Also, if they have stealth champions, right? Make sure you're you're using that so you can see them in stealth, like Shaco, like Rengar, Wukong, stuff like that. All right. Item variety and roaming. Uh, you want to go over roaming real quick? Yeah. All right. So uh, remember, what are, what are the jobs again of the support? Babysit. Do yeah. anything to win. Ward and vision. So roaming falls into the do anything to win and the, the warding category. Because as you roam, you're usually roaming to ward and then try to like just gank somebody. Put some extra pressure on the map, right? So um, now we, we talked about it earlier, but if your AD carry is left alone in a 2v1, what's going to happen if the enemy team isn't like a bunch of boosted animals? They're going to be aggressive. They're going to be aggressive and zone him off of the experience in gold. So yeah. if you leave him, uh, are you failing your job? Yeah. Yeah, because he can't farm. So you don't want to do that. Uh, so make sure that you roam when there's an opportunity. Um, really good streamer to watch that does this a lot and, and answers it is Hanjaro. He's a challenger support main. Um, and I want Twitch, actually. I don't know why I typed wiki. Just muscle memory. But here, I'll throw this in chat, too. But this guy, if you just watch him for like a day, you will become a better support player just because of his decision making. He's usually pretty good about explaining why too. And, I, and here I'm throwing this in chat. I'm giving you all the support streams to watch. Aoki's really good for like goofy mind games and playing like a douchebag, which is still an effective way to win. Um, Hanjaro is really good for like just really solid rotations, item builds, and also he does goofy shit like Caitlyn support sometimes. So it's kind of fun to watch. How does but, that work? Uh, usually it doesn't. Oh. <laughs> but but again, ask him. Like like, he's challenger. He knows, right? So here, um, what situation would it make sense to roam? Again, looking at our rules, right? Th uh, think about if the enemy team is dead. If the enemy team is dead, sure, roam. Because if they're dead, what can they not do to your AD carry? Uh, zone or kill him. Yeah, zone or kill him for sure. Uh, still got to be careful that, you know, the enemy team can't teleport on him and, like, the enemy jungler can't come and delete him. But uh, that, that kind of depends, and that's also a little bit on the AD carry. Like, you can't hold their hand the entire game. They're going to have to grow up and, and play on their own eventually. And they grow up so fast. <laughs> but, uh, but so when the AD carry can't be zoned out of this. So, like, a really good time to roam, we talked about it earlier, AD carry recalls. 
He's in base. Can the enemy team murder him when he's in base? Or walking back to lane? Maybe if, like, a Ash alt comes out of nowhere and then the jungler jumps them. Sure, the if the perfect storm of bullshit global alts happen. Yes, you, you are right. But let's say it's, like, level 3 and nobody has that, and he's just right. recalled, and it's Ezreal, he wanted to buy his tier or whatever, and he's walking back to lane. Enemy he's AD carry is doing the same. Bit. It's probably fine for a little bit. So in that little bit, that's when you have a chance to roam, especially as Blitzcrank, right? Yeah, so, I usually get mobility boots on almost every support. Yeah, mobility is really good for roaming. It's just really good for being everywhere. It's really good to not get caught out, especially if you're taking exhaust and heal like you were. Ugh. But mobility with stop. flash is even better. So uh, do that for sure. And like, while he's backing, maybe you're like full health and full mana and you don't have enough gold to back. We talked about that earlier, right? So that's the time to like go pay mid a visit. And while you're you're going mid, what are you going to do? Because your AD carry is going to come back, right? And you might have your trinket up, or you might have your sight zone already. Where are you going to be warding? Your your orange side. Um, entrances. Entrances. So what entrance are you most worried about through the river here? Um, the intersection below mid. Yeah, this area right here. Why? Because it's one of the places the enemy jungler can gank you from. Yeah, if, if you're going to gank bot, remember, we talked about he's going to come through here, or he's going to come through here, or he's going to come through here, or he's going to be goofy and jump over Dragon Pit, and, and that's weird, but that depends on who the jungler is, right? Yeah. But mostly, like, if it's a hack room with Ghost, he's going to come through here, or he's going to come through here. So while you're roaming mid, you know, just, just put a word here. Also, that's close to the chicken, so the enemy jungler will hate you because it'll burn his oracles, and that'll tilt him and make him sad. So make sure to do that. Also, this one's far enough away that he might not find it in time. It'll be really annoying. So do that. Um, do you care about this entrance when you're roaming this way? Yeah. Do you? Well, he could. the enemy jungler could come behind you. I mean, he could, but if he comes behind you, like here, here's the enemy jungler. Are you just going to run back into him and run back bot lane? No. I mean, you're just going to run this way, right? Yeah. I mean, whatever. Cool. Not that big of a deal. And, like, maybe he does. Whatever. But if you're doing this and he's down there and, like, their mid lane is something immobile, like a Lux, and you just, like, walk in and be like, Hi, I'm Blitzcrank! And you have flash, so you actually flash an E, knock her up, and then you wait for her to flash, and then you pull her back in, and hopefully your mid lane is actually paying attention and ready to hit all the buttons on their keyboard. What's probably going to happen to the Lux? She's gonna die. She's gonna die. Okay, cool. Now the jungler's coming. He's gonna gank you. You know, is, is that gonna work? No, because it's two v one. No, because it's two v one. Your cooldowns are about to be back up. So, so again, like just playing it out, it doesn't matter. Another reason, like let's say on your way up, you ward this tri brush. Well, where's your AD carry right now? Uh, back at spawn. Probably still deciding what to buy, or maybe he's here if he's good. So this ward is actually wasting time. So what you want to do? is you're coming up here, right, and you're ganking the Lux because she's in a mobile mage. That's one of the reasons you bought those Moby boots because you're like, wow, I could probably go mid a whole bunch and murder her because it'll be easy because I'm really good at Blitzcrank and she's very easy to gank because she only has one escape for my hook and that's a flash because I'm pretty sure she can't dodge me because I'm in her head and I know where she's going to move and I can just grab her. My power fist and can pop her up and blow her up and all that good stuff, right? Yeah. So, so that's definitely what you're thinking. So you're doing that. And while you're doing that, cool, you killed him. Oh, the jungler came, you killed him too because you're a god. Or maybe the jungler just backed off and you see him backing off through this ward. So whatever. And then on your way back down, because you don't have quite enough gold for your death cap yet or whatever you're going to buy on Bloodstrike. Hopefully not a death cap. Hopefully a support item. I'm, I'm, I'm capping a little. I, the only, usually the only AP item I build on Blitz is Abyssal Scepter because it's AP and MR. Yeah, and that's really good when you have like a AP mid laner, like like a Lux or a Zara for a Ziggs or an Anivia that wants to stay in the back because you're going to be in the front line. You're making literally everything around you weaker to them. Yeah. So as you're going back down and your AD carry is about to be in lane, that's when you ward the try. And that's because, cool, this took about a minute to do. Uh, if you warded it on your way up, you know, a minute of your three minute ward is gone. If you do it on your way down, you know, cool. Three minutes from when you ward, now your laner is a little bit safer, okay? Yeah. Makes sense? Uh, what, yeah. What you were talking about with jumping Lux mid lane? Uh huh. Uh, you said, like, when we did our last session with jungling, when I said I made a moo, you said, 
uh, don't use my CC right away. Like, walk in and start attacking them, and then when they run away, then... Yeah, save your hook. So, so that yeah, situation... I started doing that after you told me. Like, if I'm bot lane, I'll just W and start sprinting at them. Yeah! And then knock them up, and my ADC goes ham on them, and then they flash away, and then I pull them back, and then... Yeah, and they're doing shit like serpentining, which is adorable, because while they're going serpentine to try to dodge your hook, you're just running in a straight line, like right in the middle of them, <laughs> and you're yeah. faster because they have to travel along this. You're just traveling along this. So you actually gap close, and then like you said, you can just knock them up if you get to them, and then usually they panic flash, and oh, you saved your cue, so as soon as they flash away, yoink, you know, right back in there, right? Yeah. So yeah, it works on a Mumu. He's got that same kind of hook, right? that Blitzcrank and Thresh do. Same kind of thing with Thresh. Good Thresh players, they won't leave with their hook. They'll get their Moby Boots and they'll just walk into the whoever they're going to gank. Because let's say like Lux, right? She has her binding. Maybe you wait for, until she throws it out. And maybe she throws out her E to you to try to get some extra damage. Cool, she's on cooldown. You just walk up to her, right? She has no way to peel you. And, and then you just E. And then you drop your box, or you just start auto-attacking her, or hopefully your mid laner follows up. And then her only escape, because she still has a few more seconds left on her binding, or her E, or whatever she can use to escape, uh, is to flash away. And, oh, cool, you have your hook. You know? So, again, it depends who you're playing. You play them a little bit differently, but generally the concept is the same. Save your big CC until the very last moment. Because it'll, it'll, again maximize the chance that the enemy team makes a mistake. And again, what's our friend Bobby Knight say? Uh, make the least mistakes and you'll win. Yep, the team that makes the least amount of mistakes will win. It's not about making the big plays, it's about not screwing up. That'll win you more games, as weird as that sounds. Yeah. Alright. Cool, and now you know who Bobby Knight is, so I feel good. Because I'm yeah. old and I know who he is. And probably none of you guys in chat know who he is. <laughs> I didn't. And that is fine. <laughs> All right. Kind of makes sense? Yeah. So so roaming is you look for windows when your AD carry will not get shit on. Or maybe, like, it's an Ezreal and he can play safe. Or maybe the wave is, like, pushed up and he's going to go farm jungle or something. And while he's doing that, you know, you make a visit mid. You can go for a play top. You know, get the play, recall, come back. By the time he's done farming the jungle, you know, because you went up there with your jungler, I'm assuming... You know, the wave has pushed back up, and now you guys are ready to farm. It, it'll take a little bit of getting used to, but if you start looking for patterns where your AD carry won't get completely destroyed, that's when you can roam. And Moby right. Boots just make it so you can move around the map faster, so you have uh, bigger windows to do stuff. Yeah, I get, them, I get Moby Boots on some junglers just because it makes it easier to get around and be where you need to be. Yeah, it's, it's good on jungle, too. I usually don't build it because I, I've played enough games, I just kind of know where I need to be. But, yeah, if you, you're still not really sure, maybe you don't have good wards, or you're playing something that's just terrifying, like a Lee Sin, and you just have to get into position so you can land your full combo, and then you're done. Like, yeah, Mobies are great. All right, feel good about roaming? Yep. Also, watch Hanjaro, because, like, he is really, really good at this. And you can just ask him when the best time to roam is. He'll be like, here, I'll show you. And then he'll just do it for the rest of the game, too. That's what I like about him. His stream is, like, just small enough that he still reads all the chat. It usually only has, like, 100 people or so in it. Yeah, I'm not really into the big streams where it's just constant kappas in chat and stuff like that. Yeah, you just get lost in the noise, so it's kind of sad. All right, uh, so, so last thing, just because we're approaching three hours of coaching. Yeah. Um, item variety, what do you need to know? Um, well, I guess, the, like, there's so many items and they do so many different things. I just don't know what they do and when to buy them. Like, I just get confused and, like, I'll okay. just Google, like, is a lease AD or AP, and then I'll build off based on ah. something like that. So, so that goes back to what we said. You, you need to learn what all the champions are doing. So it's good yeah, that, that you were saying you've been playing the randoms, ones, and normals. Keep yeah. doing that, and that knowledge will come. Uh, right. But once you get that, and you're like, oh, Elise is an AP champion. You know, well, maybe I, I need something. Oh, and she does a little bit of AoE damage. She also has some assassination power. So like, like what would be a really good support item against Elise? Uh, Banshee's Veil? Well, what does Banshee's Veil do? Magic resist and 
there's a act or a passive that will block an ability. Yeah, but uh, what is your job as a support? Keep your uh, ADC alive. Do so, anything to win. So let's let's start there. Keep your ADC alive so he can farm and get strong. Does Banshee's Veil do anything to keep him alive against Elise? I mean, maybe you can flash and block the cocoon or something, but so, so right there, I don't know. Do anything to win the game. Banshee's Veil is more of a selfish buy. It keeps you alive. Yeah, I usually just buy a lot of tank items and hope they're stupid enough to attack me. I mean, that works until the players become smart. So so let, is there a tank item that actually helps your team that's really good against uh, magic damage? And the chat is helping you out. Yeah, Somebody already... Thing, lock it of iron. Yeah, Locket would be really good. Mikhail's would be really good. Uh, why would Locket be good? Let's start there. And here, I'll pull it up so we can, we can see it together. Because you help, and you can give your team a shield. Yeah, so, so Elise, what what does she do? Uh, AP. She does AP. And AoE. So what's cool about the Locket is, look at this. Look at this aura. Anybody standing near you gets 15 magic resists. It's really, really so good. So it's like the opposite of Abyssal Scepter? Yeah, Abyssal Scepter takes away the enemy team's magic resist. This gives your team magic resist. So if they have like a whole bunch of AoE magic damage, think Locket. Uh, that's really good. Also, Banner of Command also builds out of an Aegis. And this is the one that you do to troll that split-pushing AP top laner. Like if they have a Singed on the enemy team, uh, build this because he won't be able to clear the promoted minion and it's just funny. And it also gives you that same aura that gives your team 15 magic resist, right? So that'll help you stay alive because you get 20 magic resist from the item. Anybody standing near you will get 15, so you're making your AD carry tankier against that Elise, who's probably not going to be focusing you because she's going to be focusing, you know, the AD carry who can win the game for you. Also, from someone like Shen, where uh -huh. they I can force them to attack me, then tanking items are better, like yeah, Banshee's Veil. Yeah, for sure. But, I mean, this also gives you tank stuff, too. It's just not as much tank stats as, like like you said, Banshee's Veil. Yeah. Um, another thing to think about, um, this shield. This can also keep your carries alive. Like, Elise jumps in. You pop this. Suddenly you have 90 to 345 extra health on you and everyone around you. Yeah. Well, what does Banshee's Veil do again? What, what's that passive? It, it just it's blocks like a, the spell. An ability shield or something. Yeah, it's a, just a spell shield. just blocks the spell. So this, like, you're not blocking a spell, but you're probably blocking most of the damage from a spell. And you're doing it on five people if you're using the active optimally. And since she has AoE, it'll block it for everyone? It'll block it for everyone, and also you're giving magic resist to everyone standing about an Amumu alt away from you. So it's doing less damage, and it has more health to eat through. This would be just an amazing item. And it gives you cooldown reduction, which you like, because that means more hooks. You have health regen, you have health, so you're tankier. It's just really, really good. Uh, another item that they threw out was Mikhail's. Do, do you know what Mikhail's does? I, no, I don't. Okay, Mikhail's is really, really good. Uh, when they have, like, let's say, remember you said your AD carry was playing Varus? Yeah. Does Varus have any escapes? Um, kind of as old. You can... Yeah, sure. He can stun people. He can slow people with his, you know, his oh, blight yeah, of arrows. But, but like, if Elise throws a cocoon and it's gonna hit him, or a Mumu throws his his binding and it's gonna hit him, can he escape? No. Well, he's no, got flash. Get in the way. He's got flash. Or you you can like dive in front of him and be like, Mr. President, you know, take the take the bullet for him. But but, uh, what if you did it? What if you just bought this item? What? Why is this item good? That's that's actually really good. Yeah, it's ridiculously good. So if you're up against like a Tarek, if you're up against an Elise with a cocoon that'll stun people for two seconds, if you're up against an Amumu, if you're up against a Sejuani, <laughs> anything with like really hard CC, you know, just click this active. It heals for a shit ton of health, and it also removes all this stuff. Yeah, oh, like I said earlier, I just sometimes struggle with active actives on items, so I kind of shied away from items like this when I first started playing, but yeah, I and, think I'm... And like what I said earlier too, right, uh, if you're struggling and you're not comfortable, that means you're getting better. 
So force yourself to use them. Maybe that's homework. Maybe what I want you to do is uh, look up every item. Like here, uh, go stalk Hanjaro. Uh, he, he plays on a bunch of accounts, but I, I think like he is like Hanjabro or something. But op.gg, and I want you to look up every item he builds, and I want you to figure out why he's building it, okay? Here, I'm gonna throw his op.gg. This does not look like him. There are no games, that's weird. Is this down? Maybe Riot's API is down because the DDoS. Was it Boodle I don't know. They, they always claim that they took down everything, but it's usually somebody else. Uh, I just hear that they do a lot of that dumb stuff. But uh, there's a bunch of stuff you can do. Like, So if you watch Hanjaro's op.gg, God, what the hell is it? If you guys know, let me know. But if you look through his games, look at all of his support items, I want you to pick all the ones of actives, and I want you to just buy all of them, even if it's a bot game, like a co-op versus AI. And I want you to practice using every last one of the abilities every time you team fight. Like, I, I know what they do, but I just forget to use them, like, when they're up. Yeah, people are saying the API is messed up at the moment, so, like, we can't pull stuff because of the, the DDoS. And, and yeah, I, I hear you. You forget to use them when you're up. So how do you practice using them? What's the best way to do it? Use them. Yeah, just, just use them. Just do it until it becomes second nature. Like, and it, the, the way I like to explain to people, uh, are you a musician at all? Yeah. Wait, were you the guy that played guitar? No. Okay, there's one guy that played guitar, and it was a perfect metaphor. What, what instrument do you play? Alto saxophone. Alto sax. Okay, so when you're trying to learn a new riff on alto sax, that sexy Bill Clinton riff, whatever the hell it is, yakety yak, I don't know what you, you kids play these days, I'm, I'm an old man, but uh, when you're trying to play it for the first time and it's really, really hard, maybe you're going like Flight of the Bumblebee all the way up and down the every note on the, the freaking the frickin sax, uh, do you usually get it the first time? No. No. So, so what happens? How do you get better? Uh, well... You usually like play small parts of it, mm -hmm. like play a little bit, get good at that, and then move on, play a little more. So let's do the same thing here. Um, so, like uh, buy act, buy an active item, and then use it, learn to use it, and then just try out a new one. Again. Yeah. So so do this uh, when you're playing that co-op versus AI game, because remember the homework we gave you last session was try every champion in the free rotation. Yeah, I've been trying that. I. Every time there's a new rotation, I try the ones I haven't played yet. Nice. Just just play bot games. It's free IP. You can use it to buy the new Hextech crates for the, the stuff that just launched today. And, but what I want you to start doing on top of that is make sure you buy items with actives. And just try them out. Even if you're playing like if you're playing Ezreal, build Locket on them. It's not a good item on them, but it's bots, so whatever. Just have fun with it. Uh, and then I want you to practice using that active. And just do like one or two at first, and then gradually build up until you have six items with six actives, and that you're just effortlessly juggling all of your spells and freaking six actives on the number keys. And just keep right. doing it. And now now when you play sex, uh, do you notice that you get better the next day after you sleep? Um, I haven't realized that. Uh, try next time. Like, one thing I've noticed because I'm a musician as well. Like, I, I play guitar and bass and all that kind of stuff. But what I'll notice is I, I can, like, try to do a riff and I might suck at it. It doesn't matter how long I practice that day, but I'm going to suck at it that day, no matter how hard I play. Then doing nothing but sleeping, the next day I'll just be able to play it, or at least play it a little bit better. Well, the reason for that is when you sleep, your brain is literally rewiring itself to allow your hand to do the thing it sucked at the day before works the exact same way with video games and like clicking buttons on the keyboard and remembering to do stuff. If you work at it, your brain will rewire itself to make you a little bit better at it. Yeah, the first day I got Lee Sin, I kept trying to do the insect thing mm -hmm. where you ward hop behind them and kick them into your team. And, and you I screwed it up and screwed it up and it. screwed it up. And then the next like, day you tried it, right? And did you just get it once? Uh, not the next day. I've been not the practicing next day. for like a week and I can kind of do it now. Not like Quick. Like, I know the buttons I need to press. I just when I try and do it, I just can't do them. But but every day you're getting a little bit better, right? Yeah. So same kind of thing with these actives. You just need to do it. Just do it. Practice, 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 practice. And every time you sleep, your brain will get a little bit smarter, get a little bit better, and will do it even more. All right. That sounds good. And, and getting good at least then will actually help you with these actives because you know you need to like click a ward to do it. Well, that's a number key, you know. 
So it'll help you remember that you have more buttons than just your abilities. So do that. Uh, other thing I want you to do, like like watch Hinjaro's stream and ask him why he's building the item he just built and what it does, and he'll just tell you. Or his stream is actually really friendly. Sure, there'll be that one guy that'll tell you to like kill yourself or whatever, but then he'll get uh, booted from the stream. But people will answer, and they'll let you know what's up. Uh, another quick question. Yeah. Can you use the actives on yourself? Yeah. Like face of the mountain, can you shield yourself? Yeah, I know that, but yeah. uh, I use it all the time on myself and I'm running away. And uh, like the anti-stun thing that removes stuns and slows and snares, you can use that on yourself? Uh, I haven't used that item in a while, actually, because I haven't been playing support. You used to be like able to, I, but I, I don't know. You can. Max range cash molded, and I can't help my ADC if I'm stunned. Then I think you can. I think you can, but uh, try it. Try it in a bot game. Let me know, because I'm bad and I don't know. I don't know the things. I can try it right now and find out for you. All right. But, uh, After the once you end the session in a few minutes, you can try it. I guess. Yeah, sure. I'll but, keep watching. Probably. But when you're you're practicing, just try it. Actually, here we can just play. But yeah, the Sabisco. Thank you for the follow, man. I just didn't want to interrupt our friend here. So uh, for that, the different items in different areas, part of that is going to be learning all the items. Well, easiest way to do that, just watch support players that know what they're doing, and then do that. Okay, holy shit, Shevolution. Depends on the CC. Stuns, silences, knockup, stuns, suppressions, and polymorph will not let the champion with Mikhail's use it, as those forms of CC deny the use of abilities. Blinds, roots, snares, and tangles, and slows will allow the champion who holds Mikhail's to use its active on his herself on ally. So there you go. We have your answer. There you go. Stream to the rescue. Alright. That's good to know. Yeah. Now I know too. And knowing is half the battle. The other half yeah. is red and blue lasers. I don't know what that's for. No worries. Again, old old TV shows. G.I. Joe's. But yeah, Chief Illusion. Thank you very much. Very helpful. No, don't apologize. Like, I'd rather know all the things than not all the things. So pretty much anything that stops you from casting a spell normally, you won't be able to use it. That's what I'm getting from that. That's the way I would simplify that in my brain. But anything that I could still flash during should be able. Like, if you're slowed, you can still use your spells. You're just moving slower. So cool. You can Mikhail's yourself. Nice. Yeah, but in a situation like a Rude, it probably wouldn't be the best idea to use it on yourself. Why not? Uh, I mean, if you it's like it's Zyra, right? And she just rooted you, and they're all about to destroy you. Sure, use it on yourself. Get the hell out of there. Hit your W on Blitzcrank and just motor out of there. Spam your mastery mode because you're really good at you know using the number keys because you've been practicing. You know. <laughs> yeah. I've but but yeah, if you, like be, if you have to choose if you have to choose between minutes. saving like your AD carry and saving you, sure, use it on the AD carry because he's more important than you. Because again, their job is to stay alive last in a team fight so they can kill towers faster. If you survive and you're the last one standing, or how many towers are you going to take down as Blitzcrank? Probably zero. Probably zero. How many towers do you think your AD carry is going to take down, especially late game? One or two. Like all of them? Yeah. Like hey, video gamer is cool. Cool. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Alright, well, I think I've used enough of your time and pretty much done with my list. If you got more questions, we, we can answer it. But but yeah, three hours is a long time. I think our last session was really long too, but it's just because you got good questions. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll be asking in stream chat if I have any while you're playing. Yeah, sure, go for it. I, I got time for like a game or two. Uh, watch Hanjaro's stream, like give him a follow. Watch Aoki's stream. Aoki is amazing at answering every single question ever. And he does it to the point where he'll die in like his diamond promos. It's really funny. <laughs> But just, right. just just ask and, and you shall receive. That's kind of the way to think about it. All right. All right. Helpful? Yes. Thank you. Good. And if you have more questions, I mean, you know where to find us. Just ask. And usually the stream is pretty knowledgeable. I mean, like here, Chief Illusion, I think he's newer to the stream. He's already, like, helping us out. So that's awesome. Thank you for your help, sir or madam or dog, whatever you are. Whatever you whatever you gender identify as. I don't care. Even though dog is not Whatever. You know what I'm saying. But all right. Continue. We, we good? Yep. All right, kick some ass in, in ranked, man. All right, I'll get out of bronze five ranked teams. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that shouldn't be too hard. You, you see, you're learning a lot. You're learning very fast. Most players in bronze aren't doing this kind of stuff, so you're you're gonna climb pretty fast. 
I hope so. All right. Have a good night, my friend. You too. Bye-bye. Right,